next door to Palo Alto. Here at Stanford, the Cardinal play host to unbeaten and number five Washington. The Huskies come a calling with their agenda of staying alive for the college football playoff. We're about to get underway. Our thanks to Jeff Levering on hand for that matchup in the Big Ten. Here, Washington won the toss, deferred. Stanford will receive to open the game. And all John Travolta on me staying alive on the open there, Tim. That's pretty nice. <laughs> We're going to need it today. Indeed. Bryce Pringle has got it from his one-yard line. And he'll bring it out to the 22, and a marker is down. And we will check the marker and see if they backpedal them or no. Our referee is Craven Barrett. And more, more than likely, this will set them back somewhere inside the 15-yard line. Going to return, personal foul, illegal blindside block, return team number 11, 15 yard penalty. Correction, half the distance, half the distance to the goal, first down. Craven's ready, we're ready. <laughs> a paltry crowd, but a game that's very important, especially to Washington, Tim Rando, along with Spencer Tillman. You know, they are going to be caught at a position playing a team that is coming off a, a game where they had their biggest upset and comeback in history Spence they're gonna have to do it today in a first versus worst situation well it is going to be difficult their back end is not very stout Tim in terms of their ability to defend against the pass alternately Michael Penix he leads the nation 70 percent completion percentage he's one of the most efficient quarterbacks in all of college football and that's really the objective in the matchup it's the number one rated passing offense against the 131st rated defense against the pass and so that's the challenge ashton daniels who keyed that great rally from down 29 in boulder colorado a couple of weeks ago is the starter quarterback gets that first pass out to isle manor who made the big catch you might recall in boulder out to three yards at second and seven and the handoff will go to casey filkins who, along with ej smith and cedric irvin will share time and the stop was made by Tupu Tala inside. Alfonso, number 11, and it'll lead to a third and six after a gain of just one for the Cardinals. And Tim, I think that's where the Cardinals are going to have to earn it today. We talked about the interior line play from a defensive standpoint. If there is a weakness, that would be perhaps it. The back end is stout, strong, very athletic at that second level. And a quick look in, and it's good for the first down. A catch made by Tiger Bachmeyer, who's really been the hot receiver youngster. That's brother, of course, was the quarterback at Boise State some time ago. Now over at Louisiana Tech, he picks up nine on that pass. Lake Elsinore, California, Murrieta Valley High School. Yeah, Tiger, along with Alec Iremeyer, Manor is another complimentary part to his system here. And I think one of the things that Troy Taylor brings is the tight ends, but he also has a great eye for how to work in these twin pack tantrum packages with these wide receivers. To go with three wides, Philkins remains the setback, and it's a quick, shallow cross taken in by Bryce Farrell, the senior from Thousand Oaks, with a Gain of only two. It'll be second down and eight. Let's get three to watch for the Cardinal. Well, again, we just mentioned Alec, the complimentary part and wide receiver and Tiger. Outstanding guys got great athleticism. And one of the things that Troy Taylor likes to do is to find a way to work the tight end, but also have mirror packages. That is to say, something that looks the same structurally, but the outcome is run by different players, part of the same concept. Well, they're minus the tight end, their go to guy, Urasik. And here goes Ashton Daniels with a nice scamper. He's more the passing quarterback. We will see Justin Lampson as we did a few weeks back early in the season against USC. And yeah, watch Braylon Trice, number eight, the edge rusher. He's in tow. Now, this guy doesn't get a lot of attention. He's been trying to get to the quarterback, and this is one of the reasons why he's been struggling, because they've run away from him, and he's been trying to find a way to get home. It's going to be tough. We're going to keep our eyes on number eight tonight. Third down and a yard to go. The thing to remember about this Washington defense is though they've surrendered a lot of yards, they are one of the best, if not the best, inside the red zone. They rank 23rd in scoring defense, averaging less than 19 yards, or excuse me, 19 points given up to their opponents. And again goes Daniels ahead with a little quarterback power. 
out to the 35-yard line. And let's get three to watch on that outstanding defense run by William Eng and Chuck Morrell. Well, that, that's one of the rare, by the way, tandems of coordinators that work together on the defensive side of the ball. These two are excellent at it. Braylon Trice, we just mentioned him a minute ago on the edge. Michel Al Powell, that guy right there is a playmaker. He ends up all over the football field. Hampton will compliment him as well. So eight, three, and seven are the outstanding players on this Husky back end. They will be dialed up frequently to this afternoon. Well, Daniels gets it out past the 40 to the 42 on his own after he saw some pressure coming off the edge. And a healthy gain, too. Gain of six, so second down and four coming up for the Cardinal. Well, Tim, you know, this is what Troy told us he wants to do, right? He wants to control the pace and tempo of the game, still possessions got, got, away got. from that vaunted number one rated offense that we talked about. And Coach is an old quarterback, man. He knows how to control the game from that standpoint. Yeah, next door in Berkeley, where he played at Cal. Daniels late with that throw and almost picked off on the tip drill. Esteen, Mikel Esteen, who's back there at safety, almost got that one off the tip drill. He and Camden Sermon are going to have to play free today with both Turner and his backup out, the two free safeties. So Washington is a bit depleted in their back end today. We'll see if that matters at all with this uh, variety of Stanford receivers that they can throw at them. You also saw Michelle Powell again, the, the, what we call a nickel husky back. In gauge in that last play also. On third and four, nice. that ball is caught. Nice job by Tiger Bachmeyer. Hank, his brother, we touched on earlier, was a starting quarterback at Boise. We had him, Petros Papadakis, was with me back at that Mountain West title game during the COVID season. Yep, I love this twins look here. They get a natural rub underneath, get those eyes from those defenders on the back half of the Husky defense, trying to decide who they're going to cover. They're in a man concept, but once they cross, they have to either bump it or switch it or declare that's my guy. And just that little bit of distraction can be enough to allow a receiver to get open to well, So far, they're dinking and dunking yep, pretty sure well, are. aren't they? Picked up six there. So for Urban in the backfield, this time he has to unload it as the pressure came in a hurry with Trice, among others, coming right up the gut. Sort of a jailbreak. Coming right at Daniels, and he unloaded. Zion Tupalua. Patui was one of those individuals that was bringing in the pressure, Tim, on the edge, and that's the compliment that they need. If they figure they can get Trice on one side and then the edge rusher from the opposite side coming, they're going to have a chance. There's Morrell, and they're going to give an intentional grounding here. And I think they may have, they had the grounding penalty oh, no, called. And intentional grounding, offense, yep. number 14. Loss of down penalty, second down. Well, they've got a nice closed formation here. All that means they've got backs in, but could, just couldn't handle that rush, right? Gets rid of it, Timmy, and, and that's a good call there because there was no one even in the proximity yeah. of the wall. And he was in the tackle box. No yeah, absolutely. So that's a loss of down. So second down now and uh, a long way to go. Line to make would be the 42 of nice. Washington. Safety valve. What a great play. What a great play. Is he, that's E.J. Smith stopped by Raylan Goforth, number 10. Who comes in for Lufo Shio? Number five is starting at that linebacker spot. And watch him read this right here, Timmy. This is outstanding because he comes underneath two would be blockers to disrupt that play. I mean, that's one of the things that would have gashed them on the defensive side because it was a perfectly timed, oh, taking oh, advantage oh. of those edge rushers who've been trying to get after the quarterback. And so, what Troy Taylor is trying to do is say, okay, you're going to bring those edge rushers. We're going to run screen to slow them down a little bit. Go forth is a transfer from USC. Third down now at 21. Nice game inside. Daniels Great in trouble pressure. again. Pressured out. And again, gets rid of it late. He was outside the tackle box this time. Bruner, Carson Bruner, 42, the linebacker, was in hot pursuit. And it's a putt formation coming for the Cardinal. Tim, watch this, what we call an inside game. It's an E-T. The end goes around the tackle upfield, and Bruner comes straight through the middle of it. you got to sort that out. These are smart guys here at Stanford. But, man, when those guys get to swapping around positions and responsibilities, even the smartest guys have a tough time sussing out what's real and what's fake. Denzel Boston, number 12, is in single safety. As Connor Wilson on the boot it away, and look out. Not good. Off the side of the foot. 
And it's really not good when this guy, Michael Penix, is about to take the field. True. And it'll be a relatively short one when we return. Number five, Washington. Stay in the game is sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay. Timmy, it's really simple in terms of what Stanford needs to do. They try to do it on that opening drive, inspired interior run game, right? They need to take that red pill, man. You remember that one from the movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, sure that's do. where you find the hope. Sure you're gonna find it. It's going to be tough to run in there, but you got to stay committed to it. And then ultimately export your advantage. That's really what Washington's got to do. Got a short field to do it in. Now we're going to see the nation's number one rated passer in terms of efficiency go to work at the 50 yard line. Well, one left handed, yeah, uh, one left handed Heisman Trophy winner took a hit today. Dan Gabriel oh, yeah. and the Oklahoma Sooners. This left-hander rated probably a little higher than Dylan coming in as a Heisman candidate. With the handoff to Dylan Johnson, Anthony Franklin. Stop a game of five. And you're right about Penix. And you think about uh, the career he's had during that COVID season at Indiana. He really helped set himself up. And the transfer to Washington has been magnificent for him. Flags down. That pass is thrown. And... Intercepted. Are they going to rule it incomplete? They're going to rule him. Yes, it is an interception at the 18 by Colin Wright, number six. Yeah, but before that occurred, Timmy, you had movement up front. Yeah. Could be an offsides, the preliminary indication, against Stanford. And that's sort of in keeping with the way their season's gone. It's unfortunate. That's a rare opportunity for them. Yeah. Offsides. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Here's the penalty in the interior line play. You can see these guys in there, what we call putting sugar the looks on the fronts. We're on. And yeah. the interception is negated again on the back end. And that's what's problematic about it, Tim. Colin Wright and those guys back there work really hard, but Colin Wright's not going to be able to do it. He's disappointed, dejected as a result. He knows that the interceptions are hard to come by for this year. Look like Bernadelle, the middle linebacker, the Mike linebacker that got into that neutral zone as Dylan Another Johnson play. carries that. Down to the 35, and you're right. A little yellow hanky comes out one more time after a gain of five, but it could be negated. You know, it's for a lot of different reasons. It's disappointing that you see so many yellow flags. Obviously, needing to buckle down Washington coming off the close call they had against a very game ASU team. And then Stanford, of course, uh, you know, they, they're smart. You don't expect them to make the kind of mistakes that they're making. Personal foul, face mask. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, it's a couple of uh, penalties that have gone without identification from our uh, referee, Rayvon Barrett, but clearly it must have been Parker, Parker, on the tackle that brought that about. Sam Adams, the second, steps in. Already four penalties for 29 yards against the Cardinal. Well, in the red zone already. Penix wide open to the 11 yard line. Adams with the catch. Stopped. And in a hurry, he was hit right in the midsection by Gilman, 33, the strong safety. Alakai Gilman comes in with that nice punch right in the breastplate area, Tim. That's an excellent defense. Well, they get the first down. And here goes Adams again. Burrows ahead to about the six. Second and goal coming up. Tafiti, number 11, plays that edge position. Jivarua Tafiti out of Hawaii. Tim, in this efficient system that the Huskies run, the ball is going to be out a lot quicker, so I'm not sure these Stanford rushers are going to be able to affect Michael Penix in the way that they typically would somebody less adept at the scheme. As you mentioned, you're two for him, fully implementing this scheme. He knows it like the back of his hand. And Ryan Grubb, his offensive coordinator, loves to see it out of his hands quickly, and there goes Johnson. Dylan Johnson carries a few Cardinal with him. Very close, just inches away from the end zone. I love what Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator, is doing here. He's got a nice mix of pass and run. Pejorative, mainly it's it's running, trying to not press, right? Coming off a, a performance when you weren't able to score any offensive touchdowns last week, there's this in eight sense to try to press and get scores. Not trying to do that, not forcing the ball through the air. I think they went for 274, 275 last week, letting the run game still dominate here. Pistol set up. A little cross nice. buck action, touchdown. and it's in for the touchdown. Go 
going to Westover, the tight end, Jack Westover, with a little cross buck action, some eye candy on this maneuver. Yep, we call this split flow, right? The, the split flow is provided by the runner going one opposite direction, and then the guys that are on the back end, whether it's a full back, an H back, or a running back going the opposite direction. That's going to pull those inside linebackers out there. And that's the reason why um, once he pierced that line of scrimmage, there was no one there to defend him. Stanford really wanted to get out early. Had a nice little drive with a Dinkin and Duncan, then it went backwards after that uh, rounding penalty against Daniels. And then a 13 yard punt. Put this Washington offense in a great position with a short field. Brady Gross with the extra point. The lacrosse buck crossed yeah. up. Got to take care of the ball down here, man. Yeah. And Ryan Grubb absolutely loved it. He says, that's old school football right there. Yes, sir. A little fist action. The fans loving it, too. Man. You see the rushing yards. We could go with that slim victory against Arizona State. They were due for a clunker, and they had one. But you can tell right away what they had in mind, Ryan Grubb and company. Let's establish the run. Westover playing H-back out of the tight end spot. Gets the touchdown after the short field. On a, what was a really poor punt for the Cardinal after a decent drive to open. Here comes Bryce Farrell with the oh, oh, he is at the 13 yard line. A big hit. Number 42, Carson Bruner, the linebacker. And on teams, he made the play. Yeah, Bruner from line of scrimmage, too, he'll make plays, too. So putting those front line players on special teams, man, that's, that's form tackle right there. Head across the breastplate of the would-be return man. Again, doesn't have a chance to move. Plants his foot in the ground and gets him planted in the ground. Wow. Outstanding speed, technique, everything you're looking for in a middle linebacker. You saw it in Bruner's play right there. Well, he just dis oh. he discarded Mitch Lieber. That's what we call a deep leader, Tim. Yeah, I mean, 32, Lieber, who was on special teams, also plays some safety for Stanford. <laughs> he simply got discarded. I mean, he just threw him away. He hit him like the old money. He I did. Tell you that. They mark it up at the 13-yard line, and this pass is a little curl, right. and it is a sit-down catch by Bachmeyer. Loved uh, meeting his entire family, really, his sister, his brothers. We talked about Hank a little earlier, who uh, played on Tuesday night for Louisiana Tech, was able to get here. Uh, Sonny Cumbie, his coach, allowed him to come and see his family. But Tiger speaks Chinese. Yep. In addition to that, he's about two hours shy of having his pilot's license. He loves that Cessna, man. He yeah, says he, he does. Loves it. First and ten. Daniels nice. lets it fly, and he's got a man deep. Good Incomplete, time. and it was Bachmeyer, the intended receiver. Crab wants a penalty, but maybe Dominique Hampton got to him a little soon. No flag. Well, Tim, this is just a straight man route, bumped off them initially underneath it. Oh, yeah. Again, over the top, Dominique Hampton, the safe, <laughs> strong safety, thought he was beat initially, yeah. but he comes in left late with that left hand, and, oh, and that part of it actually looked clean right there. I understand why they draw attention, but, Tim, that was a pretty nice defensive yeah, play. It was, right but he was pretty handsy, too. Sure he was. He was very handsy. Second and ten. Officials have to declare what necessitates... P.I.s in every game. Oh, nice. Looks like they're going to let him play. A lot of green grass here for Daniels. And a late push at the sideline. And here comes the flag. Yep. Raylan go, go forth. Went a little too far forth. Well, Ashton Daniels was giving up himself on that play, Tim. And, and I think, I don't know how close it was, but it, it to me it looked like it wasn't an egregious and that the defender was looking to pull off of it. 14 is actually kind of slowing down just a little bit, but he's still technically in bound. Mm -hmm. That right foot didn't hit and go forth touched him yep. but that right foot was not uh, out may, of bounds at the time they're having a conversation they may pick it up they, they should pick that up that's, they may that's, pick it up there is no foul on the play <laughs> <laughs> now that'll just get uh, the uh, few home folks that are here on uh, display a little bit more angry and it also let the players play at a speed that they need to play that everyone is accepted of and wanting to play fast yeah I agree with you I think that that was a little much to call him for that because he did give himself up a little too early he was still in bounds when Raylan gave him that extra shove third down and two coming up Casey Pilkins the setback nice little inverted bone I yeah think. it okay. sure is and motion Farrell the motion man is stopped 
He can't go sideline to sideline against this defense. Carson Bruner runs him down, and once again, Stanford will be forced to punt. Yeah, Got Michelle, a little cute here. Yeah, Michelle Powell, number three. Watch him set up the edge here. Once he comes up field, you got a, a, a smaller type going inside, but the Husky will line up. That position is kind of like a Swiss Army knife position. He'll line up on the edge. He'll come from depth to safety and blitz. You got to keep an eye on where he's coming from, but he's also physical, and he can contain as he did on that last play. Ooh, nice. Flintoff yeah. will punt it away. Aiden Flintoff. And this one is taken in by Boston. Denzel with... A 47-yard boot and no return. We'll be back. Team comparison sponsored by IHG Hotels and Resorts. 18 hotel brands, one loyalty program. Spencer, that says it all, just as you mentioned at the top of the show. Worst versus first. Bobby April is doing everything he can in year one. And his first opportunity as a coordinator. He's tutored under Alvarez and others at Wisconsin. Be a part of this staff and someone that caught the eye of Troy Taylor early on. Jim Leonard is really high on him, helped him get this job. That uh, handoff is to Dylan Johnson. Of course, Leonard, the longtime Wisconsin defensive coordinator. Just one note about Bobby April. When we saw him, Timmy, yesterday, he said, I said, Coach, you look like you trimmed down a little yeah. bit. He said, man, that's the stress. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost weight since the USC game that we had. He well, has. One, one thing about it, facing the number one passing offense in the nation will, will certainly make you lose a few pounds if you got a week or, or more to think about it. Second down and six. Penix out of the shotgun. He's got Dylan Johnson back there with him. This is what he does so well, although this time I think there was a mix-up. Well, what Bobby that, April did was a nice job of yeah. moving from a cover two to a single high safety look, and I really think it got Michael Penix off of his, his coverage understanding. When you come to the line of scrimmage, you take a pre-snap read of what the front is, but anytime you turn your back to coverage, you have to reorient yourself to what's in front of you, and, and that chart that went up to uh, Bobby April. He won that match. It looked like uh, Jalen Polk went the wrong way. He was anticipating an outcut, and instead Polk turned it in. Third down and six. An opportunity to get off the field for the Stanford defense. Trips to the bottom of your screen. That's Odunze, the number one receiver, wide to the bottom of your screen, and that pass is incomplete. Intended for Jalen McMillan, number 11, who was sort of a game time decision. He's had a knee problem, but uh, they're hoping to get 10 to 20 plays out of him today. Well, they can help him, and Colin Wright can, you know, if he's going to sit there and allow him that, that much cushion underneath him, then you got to catch that ball, right? Yeah. And there was no one even close proximity to him. This is very on Washington Husky like in terms of the pitch and catch they perfected to an art Jack McAllister will punt it away Casey Filkins now is single safety waiting at the Stanford 32 nice punt fair catch called for and made at the 33 we're near the Silicon Valley in the beautiful Bay Area here on FS1 this afternoon Seven to nothing, our score at an old, beautiful stadium here near Palo Alto in Stanford. Spencer, did you know my first partner in college football, Bino Cook, was a huge, his father was a huge fan of Stanford Stadium. Much too in, young for in, that. In, in fact, Bino spread some of his dad's ashes hmm. inside this stadium at his passing. Mills and Mary Cook are buried in Pittsburgh, and really? Mr. Cook, father of Carol Bino Cook, has his ashes on the stadium floor here. Pass is incomplete. A little too high as Ashton Daniels lets it go. And believe me when I tell you, Bino would say, they've always got material at Stanford. <laughs> and they are a program of champions. And they, you know, you think about the great teams in the history of this program. Touchdown Tommy Verdell, Toby Gerhardt, as recently as Christian McCaffrey. And in the years before, Stanford with great tradition here. They hosted the Super Bowl. Again. Sure did. It Super was uh, 19. 1984 season held in 1985. Daniels. Pressure. Yeah. That backside pressure coming from the side. Braylon Trice gets him. By the way, your 49ers won that Super Bowl with mm -hmm. 
the Hogs and Rigos Bangos meeting the Dolphins. Yeah, and the edge rusher here, Braylon Trice, he won this one too. Here's the outside matchup, Tim. A, a nice little underneath coverage here. Got him covered over the top, and that's really what allowed the pressure to get there. When the coverage does its job, it's all tied in together. Everybody talks about, well, how do you get home to the quarterback? Is it just the edge rushes? No, it's the guys that are in the corners that are able to take away those pass options for the quarterback. If he can't see it, he's got to pull it down. you got an edge rusher that can win. You're going to have a sack or at least a pressure at minimum on your hands. That pass is caught by Isle Manor again, but well short of the necessary yardage needed. So the fast start that Troy Taylor was looking for, he simply has not gotten, and this defense has effectively put an umbrella around Stanford's dink and dunk style that really did run well for, I believe it was 11 plays in the opening drive before their drive stymied, and the poor punt helped set up Washington for its first score. And let's remember, this is the same Stanford team that you know spotted Colorado 29 points, so they've got the potential. They just got to have the right motivation and the triggers punch before they get awakened up. It's just one of the weird yep. perks about the evolution of this team. Flintoff with a beautiful punt and great coverage by Stanford that time. A 40-yard boot. Nothing on the return. Aaron Morris, number 31, down there to make the tackle. Well, in 21, before Kalen DeBoer arrived at Washington, they had a 4-8 and eight record, only three conference wins and zero ranked wins since that time. He's only lost two games, going 18 and two overall, with five wins over ranked teams. So, well, Kalen DeBoer, you talk about a guy that earned it yep, I at love the him. lowest of levels, at the NAIA level. I mean, he's right in there with the guy that's the star of the day in coaching, our friend Lance Leipold at Kansas. Kellen Johnson is the setback on first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Nice bounce out by Johnson. A little short, choppy steps. Gets out for just a couple, it looks like. And uh, Tefiti again, number 11, making the stop for the Cardinal. DeBoer's eight and a half years as a head coach. He's got an incredible 90% winning percentage, 97 and 11, 15, 57 and three in six seasons. And of course, 18 and two here. I like the fact that the bones of this Washington Husky program were in place. And again, that's to take nothing oh, yeah. away from away from coaches preparation it's the perfect timing scenario kind of remind me of Bob Stoops when he came into Oklahoma had a lot of talent just need to put him in the right place Johnson stopped at the 28 and those wins of course those titles came as Gilman made the stop at Sioux Falls he had four NAIA championships in five years there offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Fresno State under Jeff Tedford he owes a lot to Tedford he'd be the first to tell you that and then had that time with Tom Allen at Indiana. Penix had already been with Nick Sheridan prior to that time. But boy, oh boy, what a find to get Penix out of the portal. Bill Nixon is now the setback. Third down and seven. And again, the Cardinal defense, Bobby April looking to get his club off the field again. Michael Penix taking his time to get into the front that he wants. Here comes Blitz right up the gut. It's picked up by the Huskies. That pass is underneath, and Nixon could not reel it in. For taking so much time to get the look that he wants, Michael Penix really had to go down to his third option, and that's the check down to the back. And what that attributes to is you know, Bobby April, the defensive coordinator for the Cardinal, did a wonderful job of showing and then changing a little bit something. Here's a trip formation with soft coverage underneath. Guys are detached defensively enough away from those white-shirted guys so as to not get beat by individual matchups. And I just love the conservative approach. Bobby said he was going to do everything in his power, Spencer, to simplify yep. the job for his secondary. This is not a good punt by McAllister, but it does get a healthy roll. And statistically won't look as bad as it was as it rolls dead at the 26. So a 46-yard boot. Both of these coaches cut their teeth at lower levels. The job that Troy did at Sacramento State, boy, he just rode uh, Cam Scadaboo, didn't he? Who's now at Arizona <laughs> State not? and almost single-handedly beat Washington uh, last week. And look at those records, 23-1 and one at Sac State and 49-1 and one at Sioux Falls. Those conference records, of course, that we're discussing at those levels. But, you know, that what that proves is the, the direction that you need to take to become a head coach is not always the same. I, I love it when guys have uh, shown how they can win and win championships at lower levels 
and can uh, effectively do the same at the FBS level. This handoff is to E.J. Smith. Flag is down. Thrown is really at the moment the hand handoff came. Looked like offsides. We'll check to see if it's procedure. If it is, that'd be unfortunate because that's going to negate a seven-yard Yulu opportunity to advance the ball. Yulu Foscio made the stop. Defense, number four, in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, Zion, number four, you can just see him. He just got a little bit over the top, Tim, and got in the backfield a little bit earlier than he needed to. Yeah. He's up, he's up. Tupu Olo, Fatoe. Tupu Ola Fatoe, or as we like to say later on in the show, <laughs> ZTF. Take your time. Yeah, we'll go there. I'm working on my syllables. <laughs> Going the other way wide is Bryce Farrell. And Farrell is shoved out at the 32 by LaFoscio again. They've got some speed guys. You know, Bryce Farrell is one of those from junior from Oates Christian. Now come to, edge guy. We've come to the end of one. It just flew by, Spencer T. Quick as a hiccup. <laughs> Washington struggling some offensively, but with a short field, they did get a touchdown. There's no crying in football. We'll be right back. The Huskies this season, some accomplishments, huh? 7 0 for the first time since 16. Last three games, however, the margin of victory has slipped. 7 3 and 8 against Arizona State. And without a pick six, they may not have won that game. And you see the time of possession. Stanford has the advantage there. Poor kicking game and penalties have been the difference, really. But they do have the lead at the Huskies, and this pass on an out pattern is caught by Iowa Manor. And a good first down play. Gets it out to the 37-yard line of the Cardinal. Move the chains. You know, Ulofosio came in there, Tim, and just got that ball away. And he was bringing pressure from that middle linebacker position. The ball comes out cleanly. Great pitch and catch and awareness of where the pressure was coming from. Yeah, Tim, I think we can't underestimate the, the opposition that these teams have faced, too. I mean, every that ASU team is a lot better team yeah, than you know, they Kenny were. Dillingham is an outstanding offensive coordinator. Yeah. His D.C. Ward is unbelievable. They took him to the brink because they're legitimate, man. We see a lot of that right now as another flag comes flying yeah. up. Javion Green with the tackle of E.J. Smith that time, and the flag came down immediately. And I think another factor, at least today, is when the building has no energy, mm -hmm. and this one does not, sadly. It does not. The home team does not get a lot of support. After here on the, the play, a sportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number 52. 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. That's Boy Tunuofi. Tunuofi. That is I the first sportsmanlike foul and, on um, number 52. That'll get him out of the game mm. for a period of time. <laughs> and. Uh, and give Stanford some outstanding field position on the Washington side of the field. But Spencer, I think a lot of times it's hard to gather momentum in a game when you're the big favorite on the road in a building with no juice. But if you've got designs and you're aiming properly like this throw here in the back oh, shoulder. Yeah. Absolutely, you can and Roush, it. the tight end, comes away with it. And talk about some pre-snap eye candy like Andy <laughs> Kotelnicki, who runs that Kansas offense. And it Look was at good. This. It was good for 20 yards. And I love the way he, he combs and sits in the pocket and just navigates the space and understands it. That was on a dart and a line. But you could see everything was oriented toward the success of that play. You got the coverage that you look for. You got the mechanics from their quarterback. Now just go move the ball down the field. We'll see the penalty in just a moment here. As you see on the carry, Casey Filkins. Trying to high hurdle his way to the 26. Braylon tries with a stop a gain of one. Yeah, you can see a little WWE action going on down here, too. Yeah. A little headbutt going on there. Mm -hmm. There you, you go. It. And then one up top, too. You got a one off the top turn buckle and one down at the lower <laughs> leg area. <laughs> Gee. Oh, these guys are Alongside scary. Jimmy Superfly Snooker, this is Tim Brando. Filkins with the carry and markers How come many down again. Is that? Can you a do lot of penalties. Of yeah. A lot of penalties. Seventh flag that we've seen. And again, we're just underway in the second quarter. Yes, sir. You know, you wanted to call last week's game as they sort this thing out. Yes, sir. 55. An aberration. Personal foul. 
face mask. Defense, number 55, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. That's Jacob Bandez, 6'3", 302 pounder out of Pittsburgh, California. The guilty party there. Yeah, they got to be careful. Those, the, the nose tackling, some of those guys that are backing up in the middle, they're getting a little thin in those numbers, Tim. Yeah, he backs up uh, MJ Ale, 68, mm -hmm. and he picked up that penalty. We've had a couple of them. That's the second face mask. One went against Stanford, which really helped propel Washington with the short field they had for their lone score in the first quarter. Daniels on the look in. Quick slant caught by Ayamanner. And that's down to the five yard line. Dominique nailed him too when he got down there and paid for it. Again, you can see nice footwork and nice ability to get that ball out where it needed to be. Probably if you're splitting hairs, it needs to be on the opposite side of that shoulder, on the opposite side where the defender was. Here's that penalty. So, yeah, here's the penalty here. Again, away. Second down and three. Need to get that ball inside nice the call. Nice Look call. at that. It's gonna, right up it, the it may come back to me. Power, go power with you, Ashton Daniels. You remember in our meeting, I said the tackles, the inside tackles for this Washington front is where the weakness is. There's a flag, a couple of flags now. Yep. To me, structurally, the bigger issue here is the soft spots between the guard. Irrespective of what happens, who's responsible for this, that's where the Stanford Cardinal needs to be attacking this front. Looks like the Illegal touchdown. Substitution, will. defense, 12 in formation. That penalty is declined. The result yes. of the play, touchdown. Spencer, Stanford began this game with four straight penalties. The Huskies in this drive, three straight penalties for 35 yards. So look at this gap. This is not even sound. There is a, the respective coverage in the middle of that field. There is no defense in front that is built on integrity that you line up this way. You, they're trying to invite you to run the ball, but you do. <laughs> they're trying to get their blitzer down there. Ulifosio was the guy that was supposed to fill it, but he got a little bit too clever and left that void there before the ball was snapped. Yeah, and that's the strength of this Washington team, their defense in the red zone. Quarterback power with Ashton Daniels. Troy Taylor kind of does that ball. Line up behind the center when you're that close to the end zone. Come on. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay. Scenic campus here at Stanford. And uh, here's the first touchdown rushing of the year for Ashton Daniels. Had three of them a season ago. Ulifosio, you saw him coming in there, the middle linebacker, Tim. He came down, but they were trying to give what we call a bastard read or look of formation, trying to invite the quarterback to run in that area. But Ashton Daniels saw it and got that snap off before you appreciate got a chance to get down out of that little Nixon. position that he was in. Nixon let that one go through for a touchback, so they'll bring it out. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, happy to have you with us here on FS1. And you see the total yards today with a penalty riddled game without question. And uh, Washington's given up a lot of yards by virtue of that. Granted, they don't look particularly impressive, Timmy. No. Coming off the bad performance last week, albeit against a very game ASU club. I think that they're keeping a lot in their back pocket. That's just my take on it based on what I've seen in the first six or so games. And then last week, they ran into a team that was much, much more underrated. Well, no style points are going to be good, and that's for sure. No question. On a little comeback, that pass is caught by Jack Westover, who had the touchdown on a running play when he lined up as an H-back, a gain of five on that play. It's almost as if since the Oregon game, which was an emotional victory that they got at home, they've been in a three-week slumber. Well, they've got a murder's row schedule coming they up, sure Timmy, do. but as long as they're in that five hole, you know there's going to be some attrition. Yep. Some other teams are going to fall. If they're in that five spot, yep. if they can just win out. I think they're going to be in a great position. Spencer, that's a, just a lack of concentration by Odunze. I mean, this is... Uh, he runs a beautiful route, turns in, then back out, and just no concentration. Yeah, I mean, well, his head is turning upfield like he's about ready to turn upfield. And even though there's coverage there on his back hip, Tim, you've got to be patient enough to understand that Colin Wright was not close enough for you to feel that and to be affected by that. Good two and a half yards away from him. You go trips to the top of your screen. Only one of three on third down so far for Penix and his offense. And the timeout's going to be That's a Bobby forced Abraham upon them. There. Bobby April did a wonderful job of Ryan Grubb and confusing Coach in that setup. 
DeBoer will talk about it after this timeout. Michael Time Penix. Out. Washington. It's their yeah, first I think of the half. That. <laughs> <laughs> Here at Stanford Stadium, where Washington and the Cardinal are deadlocked at seven. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, third down and five. Penix will go empty with an extra tight end. We have pressure look now they're changing this up and going with the more conventional front defensively. Nice game inside. Penix shoots it and it is caught. That is Jalen Polk with the reception. The transfer from Texas Tech brings it in for a first down, a gain of 13. You know, Bobby Avery tried to get some movement around that defensive front to find a way to get pressure on Michael Penix. Now they're going to go with a little pace and a little tempo, see if they can get some rhythm here. So deliberate, man. <laughs> Still plenty of time on that play clock, but he'll utilize it. Nice. Johnson, great penetration that time by the Stanford defense. Tristan Sinclair came from that middle linebacker position. The middle linebacker, number eight, Tim, comes rushing up through there with great identification, the ability to see where you want to go. But here's the previous play right here. The pressure really was not necessarily affected, but you were able to get to the quarterback because of the coverage, and you follow up there with a great pressure by Tristan Sinclair. Alfredo Ibar, 14, made the tackle after Sinclair declared that he would have to make that cut right into his teammate. Ibar's eyesight. Penix. All kinds of time. Now running out, and that pass is airmailed. Another coverage. Man. Yeah, and it was intended for Polk again. So, ostensibly, what you're hoping, when you can cover that well on the back end, somebody ought to be able to get home. But the fact that you're not able to get home is really speaking to your inability to, to get to the quarterback from the edges. Nice release, but you've got a high cloud or an umbrella keeping everything in front of it, Tim, and your eyes focus on the quarterback. It's really tough to get downfield passes completely against right. this. Still right. in the cover, too. Really does remind you of what Jim Leonard did, doesn't it? It can, yeah. particularly when they roll from this cover two look to a single high look. Jim Leonard, of course, the longtime defensive coordinator for years at Wisconsin. April was tutored by. Odunze has this reception. Good for another first down at the 41 yard line of Stanford. I think that's his first catch, Tim. That was a nice one, good for about 18 yards. Here's the Twins look off the numbers, and you can see Odunze breaking down, pivot, inside return. I mean, he's, he's so efficient in his route running, it makes him one of the top five six receivers in the nation in my opinion they go from the 41 of their own to the 41 nice. of the cardinal and that quick out is taken by westover and he steps out of bounds in front of the defender Duran manley gain just, of five yeah they just aren't pushing the ball up the field i mean they're getting it in chunks but here's Penix. you see his eyes in the front looking like a cylon warrior man from left right coming back the opposite direction then he finds the guy sits it down i love a quarterback that can just earn what he sees and then match his head with his physical body in terms of what to do next. A lot of people can see it, so he can't make the physical transition to make the throw. And he can spin it, as they say. Play fake. Nice. Underneath he goes to Devin Culp, the tight end, and nice. look out. He's high stepping inside the 10. Saving tackle by Scotty Edwards, number 21, the sophomore from Holiday, Utah. 33 yards and it's first and goal. And Tim, this is about individual players gotten to step up. Zaren Manley, number four. Watch him on the edge here. This is a what makes this play is the reverse out. You get everybody flowing to the left and you come back to the opposite direction. Watch him before come up. There's a little miss. And then you get the big tight end, high stepping it on the other end. Great pitch and catch. More importantly, it really exposes the weakness on the back end, not just in coverage, but also in one stopping ability for the target. Well, they moved it back to the seven yard line, so a 29 yard gain rather than 33. First and goal, Penix looking nice for the fade, ball. and it is caught. It's touchdown, <laughs> Old Doomsday. His seventh touchdown of the season over Colin Wright, number six. You know, Colin Wright, all six foot of him, Timmy, was in the wrong place. I mean, he tried to, but in taking this route away from him, you're matched up, press, dog read. He's not going to find the quarterback. He's going to try to look solely at the receiver. But at some point in time, you got to relocate and orient yourself to where the 
thrower of the ball, of the ball is relative to the receiver. Gross with the extra point. Well, without question, the best drive that we have seen from Washington. And Colt got it started, the big tight end. Ooh, he was high stepping right there. <laughs> and then Penix with a perfect pass. He's so accurate and is so versatile. Outstanding 75-yard drive in nine plays. Penix, 21st touchdown pass of the year. His 52nd touchdown pass as a Husky. Has 81 in his uh, college career. Also has 10 rushing touchdowns. And that arm of his was on full display on that particular drive. You saw Rome there talking to Jamarcus Shepard, the receiver coach. And again, he works hand-in-hand -hand with those guys on those route releases. And that fade you saw was perfect. No doubt aided and abetted by Shepard's presence of his receiver coach. And it's a touchback. E.J. Smith will stay in the end zone. A look back at that Stanford drive the last time around. Well, Timmy, they put some things together, right? They worked the edges nicely. The quarterback set in the pocket and found his receivers. Nice pitch and catches. He kept it low where he needed to and then found a wide open, gaping, lack of integrity front that he could take advantage of. So I really like the end result of that. Let's see if Washington continues to invite him to run the ball in the middle of the field and let's see if they can continue to take advantage of it. Well, maybe these offenses are beginning to get a little pep in their step here in the second quarter after both were really railroaded by penalties mm -hmm. self-induced yeah self-induced in the first quarter nice a little out pattern that is reeled in by Isle Manor so they need that kind of yardage on first down keep it second and short pick up of eight second and two coming up yeah I don't know if they really like to get in some of those underneath routes where it gets a little bit crowded and I don't think this front is pressuring them to affect the sight line and the windows of the quarterback. But you know what? The edges have been great for him. That's how they got the scoring drive. Well, this is a Washington defense that relies heavily on its edge rushers. But right now, the middle of this defense is there for the taking as Filkins gets ahead for four and a first down. Braylon Trice drags him down. And he's that edge rusher that does have you know, the scouts looking at him, but he's not been as productive defensively, statistically, as they'd like coming in, as you see Chuck Morrell looking on. Well, I think these coaches understand why he's not been as productive. Teams are not stupid. You know, a lot of times <laughs> they're not going to run your direction. They're going to run away from you. And so that can be frustrating for a young talent. That was the 10th Stanford first down. Here's a quick out again. Yep. And they're going to take that as long as Washington gives it to them. Well, Jamar Muhammad was the, the, the corner then sitting down on that route. And he did a wonderful job in terms of his proximity to the receiver. But when it's a timing route, and when it doesn't matter, either one of these quarterbacks can throw it. Ashton Daniels and Lamson can throw it as well. Justin is outstanding at releasing that ball on time and in rhythm. Remember. Their coach, Troy Taylor, is a West Coast oriented guy. Everything is about rhythm and control. Short seven to ten yards will be the maximum on some of these routes that you run. But the whole advantage of the system is predicated on efficiency and quickness. Filkins will be three yards. Well, yeah, three yards shy, maybe four as he stopped at the 44 yard line by uh, Totale. Alfonso Tutelli with the stop. It'll be third down and three coming up. There's a little bit of a, a smorgasbord, you might call it, in Troy Taylor's approach. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's been affected by what David Shaw, his predecessor, did in the West Coast, but also a lot of spread concepts and what he likes to do. Justin Lamson, right on cue, Spencer, mm -hmm. comes in in the shotgun now with Filkins back there with him. He can run it. They generally allow him to when he comes in and nice there you see it. first down and maybe wow. more let me tell you something man that kid has got the instincts of a running back sure does you watch him come take this direct snap for this nine yards that he advances the ball up the field when he sees that immediate hole 
Watch him read this thing and slowly drift to the left a little bit. You see it? He sees. That's a vision. That's a court. That's a running back thing right there, man. Got great attitude and he can throw it enough, well enough to be dangerous as well, Tim. He takes it on. I yeah. love him getting the pad level down. You know, he did a nice job uh, against USC when he came in early. Of course, the Trojans were burying them early, but he got hurt in that football game. Is rebounded from it. Here's a pass to Filkins. And he's ahead. Ulafosio shoves him out after a gain of three. Ulafosio came all the way over from his middle linebacker position to cover that flat. But you know, Tim, in these defenses today, they're going to put a lot of onus on defenders, particularly those in the middle, to be hybrids, right? To be able to be flexible enough to run and chase down the field vertically with a tight end or even a slot guy from time to time. Uh, Bail in the flat, cover it. So it's about being a Swiss Army knife, man. Second and seven. Late blitz coming. Nice. Looking on a post pattern for Isle Manor. Ah. Incomplete. Well, Isle Manor kind of backed off of that play at the last minute. And Ellick, I thought he had him, man. He was between at his ex receiver position between two defenders. And he almost like he faded at the end of it, anticipating the ball. So he got a nice up route move and he split the defenders. And see, so he just kind of faded and gave up on it. You know, I thought the inside coverage was not strong enough to really just deter him from getting close to that ball. You know, if he had taken a stronger angle right to the ball, he might have gotten a P.I. call, too. Yep. If he had just turned right for it, and you see the frustration from his quarterback, Ashton Daniels. Third down, 13. Well, Mikel Esteem was there, number 24, but once again, I don't think there was enough contact to make him redirect. Caleb Hampton, 34, is in the backfield. There's another Flags play. down as soon as the ball is snapped, and this pass is incomplete. Sort of a jump ball situation. Farrell was trying to bring it in, but it falls incomplete. Esteen was there again. Mikhail Esteen, 24, calling on him to play in place of Turner. And Fabicu Alanen, both out for this Washington defense at the free safety spot. Illegal shift. Offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That happens to Troy's team a bit because of so much that he likes to put in his offense with shifts and changes pre-snap from time to time. Well, he's got to sort through and find an advantage, a matchup, right? You know, he, it was a great ball that was thrown. That's what he's mouthing right now. He's, he's going to keep his quarterback up in that position where emotionally he's affirmed and he's in the position where he knows he's doing the right things. Great ball is just an alignment situation, trying to put a lot of package in. Guy's got to commit that to memory at 20 hours a week. Boston awaits this end over in punt from Flintoff. He does get some good hang time. And it's inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Stanford's got 35 plays to Washington's 21. They possess the ball twice as much, yet they find themselves down by a touch. <laughs> oh, Sarge, didn't you like that shot? What a wonderful, he got a high five for that. Probably was on hand for his stand-up on Thursday night in L.A. I'm not sure if you knew that, Spencer, but he's now working comedy shops. Very nice. Oh, the Sarge has all kinds of tricks up his sleeve. Going deep and oh, wide God. open, Jalen Polk. Flags are down. Polk will take it the distance. We'll see. 92 yards if it counts. Polk, Polk came wide open, Tim, for a reason. I don't know if it's incidental contact. Or if he pushed off for intentional or not, but yep. Pass interference. Defense. That penalty is yeah. declined. Nice. Result to the play. Touchdown. Well, let's see if this was a PI or an OPI <laughs> because he might have just taken a lesson from Michael Irvin back in the day with Troy Aikman. Well, either way, Watch this. if it's defense, you're, you're embarrassed by what happens. He got a twins look here on the numbers, and as he released against a bail technique, he, that, that's, that's definitely defensive pass interference okay. you, you can't grab a guy like that yep. you know and, and here's the thing about it Tim the technique you're camped inside and you allow him to go you gave him that pathway and then you grab him I mean that's like insult and injury on top of it. the longest play by far 92 yards all season long 50 was their longest touchdown play until that one and right away Michael Penix shows you just how gifted that arm of his is, and of course you can't be more wide open than that.
Well, Timmy, that was again Colin Wright. Colin Wright, again, has been attacked a number of times tonight, but there he made him pay for it. But I think the thing that's indictable about Colin's coverage is he stepped outside and gave the release to the inside, right? And if you're doing that, you got to turn and bail and run with him. I know Colin can run. But then, if you're concerned that the guy's got more speed, you're going to start grabbing. Him. Well, and that's exactly what. Well, happened. then tackle it. Yep. Well, that's I what happens. Just take you know, the 15 if you're yards. Do it, tackle him. Yeah, tackle him. Don't give him the, the home run shot. Yeah, that. I think Spencer, when it comes to the work of a secondary in today's college game, you might as well put the pressure on the guys in the striped shirts to define what pass interference is. But, and, and in every game, that's. The good defenses today don't mind penalties in their secondary if they're not giving up 92 yards on one play. Well, that's an accurate point, and it's related, Timmy. But I put the onus on young men and coaches to hold them accountable because yeah. they're playing the techniques. They're calling the plays. They need to know the impact of if I don't execute this technique and I'm on an island, it's going to be problematic. And the fair catch is made. They'll start. Well, Mondays, you can hit hard, but Colin hits harder. If you love football, and you're going, oh, if you do, and you're going to watch the most interesting man in sports. He's got plenty to say, especially about Michigan, USC. So don't miss the herd with Colin Coward, Monday at noon Eastern, only on FS1. Wherever you may be. <laughs> Colin is truly one of the, not only a great content creator, but super businessman of sports and has that uh, view of how sports should be related in everyday life. Colin and I competed for some jobs. Back I remember that. To he told me about that. He sure did. Back in his days as an anchor. Caleb Hampton in that backfield. This pass nice is for Bachmeyer. Tiger takes it in out fighting Jabbar Muhammad right there. This is a huge drive here for the Cardinal to maintain contact. And watch the back shoulder placement here for 30 yards it's worth, and that's what makes it possible for Tiger to catch this. <laughs> Tiger's got a, oh, the jersey by the right hand and the ball by the left hand. That's how you that's fight. Outstanding, that's man. how you fight P.I. That's with O.P.I. Unbelievable you fight P.I. with O.P.I. <laughs> that could have been holding on him. That's right, man. Four receptions for 59 yards for Bachmeyer. Boy, I'd love talking to his dad, his brother, his younger brother. Buck is his name. Nice E.J. Point. Smith takes it. A turf monster gets him after an initial shove from uh, Ulofoscio. And uh, Hank now has been all over the place. Ulofoscio, watch number five. This is a nice little cut, jump cut right here. Ooh. Right with that 22. Look like an old uh, Emmett Smith type style. Why wouldn't it be, right? He's talking about that family of Bachmeyers. There's Hank, Cougar, Tiger, Puma, and the daughter is Ella. Ella is the, the star heptathlete of the family. His father, Michael, had a uh, brain tumor. Great story of comeback on his part. And there's a nice run by Daniels. Ball loose, but it's recovered by the Cardinal at the 18-yard line as Daniels hit the turf. Nice work by Bryce Farrell to get on top of it. I thought they had him dead to rights when he stepped out of this, Tim. It's just a wonderful job of understanding the presence that he has around him. Jacob Bandis was one of the defenders that had a shot at him. He just couldn't bring him down until after he got some significant yards. Now they're going to give him the 18-yard line on the fumble, but his knee was yeah, his down knee before down. it came out. Ulifosio's on top of him, but his yeah. knee is down. Little Hampton remains the setback. That pass thrown in a crowd. Bachmeyer brings it in at the 22. That's a game of six. Now, the cool thing about what Troy Taylor is doing right now, but, you know, if you look at how they built this success, Tim, here's this tight formation that you're looking at. The ball is out really quick. Edge rusher didn't have a chance to get there. The ball is thrown. Yeah. The zip, the snap on it. I mean, that, that efficiency, that good ball that's tight. Allows for someone to catch it, man. It's it's, it's a really great pitch and catch. Yeah, he's got a he's got a wind up, but it's a good one and it's quick. Second down and four coming up with the ball at the 22. Emmett Smith's son EJ is in the backfield again. I remember when he was on his recruiting trip here. We had the Notre Dame game to close out the 2018 season, and we've got a I don't think Troy wanted the time out there. He did, no, he, he called it, but. 
He, he wants the clock to be reset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he reacts. You know, after that Colorado game, I mean, after that whirlwind comeback, and Iowa Manor made that great catch Time over out. Hunter. Stanford, their first of the half. Whether you like it or not, Troy, you're going to have to take that time out. The interview that was with him post game was <laughs> he was as deadpan as anyone could possibly be. What a comeback it was. 29 nothing at half. They staged this incredible comeback. Iowa Manor, Travis Hunter still having nightmares of this touchdown. That was the difference. 294 yards receiving, three touchdowns and all in that game, and a 46 to 43 victory and what Timmy Ashton Daniels did in that game that allowed him to come back when he placed the ball it was always like in back shoulder scenarios where yep. he allowed the receiver to come back to it throwing them open as opposed to trying to hit it in tight windows this is a rhythm based system right it's predicated on steps and drops that are predetermined so technically if you run the first seven yards or so of the route properly the ball should be on the way before you yep. turn out of your route yeah he he made the, the, the statement to us yesterday when we met that he felt like his team, because they, they are intelligent, went into the locker room and they were embarrassed and they played with an edge mm -hmm. because of that level of embarrassment. And they have not been able to play with that kind of zeal since in hopes that they, they can maybe bottle it and get it going after the break they have. Play fake, quick crossing pattern, and on that, it's caught. Bachmeyer again on the slant, gets it down to the 10. Boy, Tiger, he's got it all, Spencer. He's got it all. Well, that excellent performance can't be appreciated without the quarterback's throw, right? He places it, once again, on that back shoulder, away from the underneath coverage. And, Tim, the one thing that's that comes with those great performances that you're talking about, whether it's coming back from 29 down, every great performance becomes a judge. Once you define yourself that you're capable of doing it, the onus is on you. Oh, oh look at like that right there. there. <laughs> Man, he looked like Emmett on that one. That's Stopped it. at the six-yard line. Boy, he was uh, showing those quick pistons <laughs> a la Emmett back in the day when he grew up in in Florida, Escambia High School. I'll never forget when I first saw him play at Florida, I called him the natural. Not the biggest, not the strongest, but boy, oh boy, does he find openings. Yeah, we call that run Fox 2 run, man. It's slippery, and so was he on that play. Look at that. You got to catch that one. Bryce Farrell just does not bring it in. Can make a case the throw came a little late. Gave the defense a little bit of time to get there, and now a third and goal. The problem with that catch, Bryce tried to catch it right hand over top. It actually should be the opposite. Left hand should be up, the back hand should be there to catch it from going out of bounds. And so for a moment, you say, what difference does that make? Well, it makes a big difference because if you put your right hand, it's in the view of your eye. You cannot see the ball for a flash of a second. So you put the ball, your right hand underneath, and your left hand up. Third and goal. Nice. Oh, a shovel pass, but it's well defended. Bachmeyer. And he was eyed quickly by Ulofosio. And number five made an outstanding defensive play. The senior out of Anchorage, Alaska. Let's see if there's a soft spot right here. You're going to see Tiger put that foot in the ground, then come back underneath it. He, he read it properly, right? And you know what? If he'd have... Timmy, if he had, had his hand up. Connor McLaughlin, the right tackle, number 71, had given him the angle that he needed. If he just had his head up just for a beat, he would have seen where to make that cut. Alfonso Tupu Tale gave some assistance that time to Yulafosio. So it is fourth and goal. Interesting decision here. Yeah, a great decision. And I, I, I like it because every defense has a weakness. With the timeout, you have a chance to discern what they're going to do structurally. So they're going to. Go ahead and kick this thing. I like the I like the decision. Yeah, because I like you got to get some points when you're down here mm -hmm. against a, an offense that is as explosive as Washington's already revealed they are. Stanford's defense had done a really nice job before that bust on the 92 yard touchdown. And it's Joshua Carty. We'll try this field goal. 22 yards. And it's good. 
And remember, the Huskies will get it to start the second half. So getting any points at all really essential in that sequence. I think they've acquitted themselves. I, I really do. I mean, everybody knows that Washington on paper is a much better ball club. And where they are in their evolution, Stanford's got a ways to go. Yeah, they've had spotty success. But you know, that Colorado thing sticks in people's mind. But they don't have the depth to do that consistently, Tim, especially against this Washington team that was set up for that guy right there to take it to the next level. Well, DeBoer, when you think about the way Jimmy Lake left and uh, the circumstances surrounding it, he took over when Chris Peterson, really, I think, surprised him after that Apple Cup victory against uh, the late Mike Leach that we were on hand for. That was right before we came to Stanford mm -hmm. on uh, the Thanksgiving weekend of 2018. And uh, that's when E.J. Smith was here on his recruiting trip with his father and family. And the uh, Huskies have Will Nixon back deep, awaiting the kick. Still plenty of time for this Washington offense. With the timeouts they have remaining. Now the offense was uh, stagnant for both early, but after some penalties and a poor punt, Westover got in on a cross puck. How about that chicanery with Ashton Daniels? That tied it briefly. Then Odunze with uh, a perfect fade pattern, and then this dandy from deep. The Jalen Polk got the separation to 14. It's now an 11 point lead. And you look at those those yards 92 on one play and 113 on 21 prior to that. See what Washington does here with this lead and the ball where it is at the 25. Nice pressure. Yep, he's just going to unload. Incomplete. Thrown in the vicinity of Westover. Second and ten. A 27 and a half point favorite. The Huskies coming into this game. And we've seen uh, in today's college football, that means very little. Very little. Last week, uh, Houston was a 24 point underdog and was a. Uh, Potentially, anyway, a bad mark away from overtime against Texas. Second down and ten. Penix looping nice. it long for Bernard. And Jeremy unable to bring it in. Jeremy Bernard. Transfer from Michigan State by way of Las Vegas, Nevada. Has been hampered by an ankle injury. Was questionable for the game. Unable to bring this one in. Slightly Sean overthrown. Frosto Ramos is the guy that's back there defending number 17. He's got to be mindful. If he's going to pick up that drive route coming across the field, you better jump it soon because it can get away from you in a hurry. Well, one quick thing. If you're going to go for it and throw the ball around, now suddenly it's third and ten. Stanford has a chance to perhaps get the ball back. Sam Adams, the second, remains the setback. Penix is going to let it fly again. That pass is dangerous. incomplete and dangerous. Yes, Westover was the intended receiver, and ball was knocked around a bit. A lot of guys back there. Gilman was back there, too, number 33, Tim. When he came underneath that one, he had a chance to squat on that one and then sneak under there. Yeah. And I, I don't think because of the angle where he was throwing it, uh, you're right. Alakai, even seen it. You know what? Alakai almost got that into the air for Frosto Ramos to come away with a tip drill. Fourth and ten. And with 49 ticks left and two timeouts remaining, Stanford might be able to score somehow again before the break. Alistair to boot it away. Nice high spiral. Fair catch by Bryce Farrell. And uh, the ball is at the 33 after a 38 yard boot. So, listen, they've got plenty to work with here if they want to get down and perhaps get in field goal range, if not better, in the last 41 seconds of the half. Hey, listen, this is going to be the book. You're going to go five yard out, come back maybe with a comeback, and then get the ball out of bounds. He's going to get three plays out of this, at least three mm -hmm. plays out of this. And that, just work the edges. That's what he's going to do. That was a 24 second drive by Washington. So, you know, you run that risk if you're going to be daring with your offense and try to get more. Uh, you give uh, Stanford an opportunity to see if they can get back in the scoring column before the break. 
A little delay to E.J. Smith. And he delivers a blow as he heads out of bounds. Up at the 38-yard line, running right into Elijah Jackson, number 25. Elijah Jackson may have gotten the worst end of that, but I think E.J. could have delivered that a little bit more uh, like Pops would have. He Pops sure have did. Put him on his back like he did the New York Giants in that, that <laughs> outstanding game in history. Second and five. This pass is oh, caught. Oh, and a marker comes down be a targeting after Isle Manor made the catch. And That's you're right, that was a launch. This will be a targeting call. Yeah, Carson Bruner's got to be careful, man, when a guy's defenseless like that. And again, we'll let them unpack it, but you can see that pretty clear from up here. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, this appeared to be a launch by the defender. Bruner. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense. Number 42. That now, play will be under review. Uh, the interesting part of this, Spencer, is he did launch, okay, and it did go to the head and neck area, but he did turn, and it was more of a shoulder yeah. to the head and neck That's area. That's the way I see it. I, I think of launch more in, in terms of a guy who's coiling up and, and is springing forward. Correct. But it was around the head and neck area, and that's really around the crown of it, and maybe yep. Dean can enlighten both of us. Yeah, we saw one of those in the Kansas-Oklahoma game uh, near the end zone, you might recall, for those of you that may have seen it. Let's go to Dean. So the key here, yes, we have a defenseless player. Are we, do we have forcible contact to the head neck area? A couple of good looks here. So again, what is the defender leading with? Looks like the shoulder, but is he really attacking? It has to be that attack. You guys mentioned the launch, and, and we've established that he doesn't launch. It looks to me like this is a collision. I don't necessarily think this is an attack. There is some forcible contact, but they have to confirm all elements here. After review, there is no targeting on the play. Result of the play, the first down. Well done, Dean. Yep. In the game earlier today at Kansas, it happened at the Clock goal line. Clock and it was an ready. incredible situation because it was the quarterback that slid early and was defenseless. He didn't get the into the end zone because he slid too soon, did Dean, but there was a targeting call which enabled four more tries to the end zone for Kansas, who upset Oklahoma. This pass, a little curl, and it's again complete to Isle Manor. And just like that, they're down to the 32 with 21 ticks remaining, and they're going to try to move those chains and get another play in, perhaps spike it, and they do. Well, just like I thought they would do, Tim, and they moved it down, and they got a wonderful call, on, and as, they, as they see it, on their part with their targeting. Here's the inside route here. It's just a little check down route. Taking advantage of the zone coverage there. <laughs> nice work by the officials to get that extra two mm -hmm. seconds in because the clock did continue to run. You're supposed to get a little help from your official timekeeper in those situations. Second and ten. Daniels is flushed. Needs to get rid of it and does. The incompletion is probably what you want, and the marker is down, and that's thrown in an area where you suspect holding. Not good if you're trying to get into field goal range. Nope, and that's going to take them back, Tim, and that's unfortunate, too, because they worked so hard. Number 71. That's a 10-yard penalty. Second down. And it's Connor McLaughlin, again, the right tackle, number 71, Tim, and he, you can see him get his arms, the left one, those long arms. Yep. Got great, great prototypical body, man, but when you get those long arms out there stretched out and you're grasping people, they're going to catch you, particularly as an end man on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's 6'7", 295, McLaughlin. Two timeouts remaining now. They can go. They can use all the field if they want. Daniels stepping up. Oh, he's dangerous. Look out. And he ducks under. At the 31. Got to get a timeout. Might have been a little late getting it. I think they could have preserved a second or two more. But that may have just put them in field goal range. Yeah, though, might have. This. And three. Yeah, they did get a couple of mm -hmm. extra seconds. So now you can run one more play. Remember, you still have a timeout remaining. One and one. Yep. So with eight seconds, you could certainly run one more play. Try to get your kicker, Joshua Cardi, a little closer. Field goal would be 48 to 49 now, and he is a great kicker. Yep. And see, here's where the game is a little bit different than the NFL level. Those hash marks are a lot less closer to the sideline. There's a lot of water in there to the, what we would call the short side of the field. 
you still, as your point was, Tim, have one more play to take a shot over here yep. on an out cut. I would bring some type of short motion to that side of the field and try to work it quickly. They're going to try to get him in great shape. Daniels gets him there. And that extra three or four yards can it make matter. a big, big difference. Now it'll be in the neighborhood of 45 yards as opposed to 48 or 9. Great use of clock no, and the timeouts remaining by the Cardinal here. Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about winning in the margins, and Troy Taylor is, is about as bright as they come with respect to understanding the nuances of the game. And that was a prime example of understanding how positioning the ball inside the hashes makes it easier for this straight on kick. I, I really hope that uh, the fans here in the Palo Alto area but get behind him because he's they lost a legendary coach here at Shaw when he decided to step down but Troy Taylor is the perfect guy at just the right time for this program. Washington's going to take a timeout. It will be a 47 yarder timeout Washington. That's their final timeout of the half. 61 yards is a career long for Cardi. He's hit a 53 yarder this year. Tim, I, I really love your comment about Troy. You know, it, it's a, it's about fit, right? Yeah. When you come to Stanford, it's about that. So when you get to know him, you're going to learn yeah. what he's all about in terms of the Great fit. Cal quarterback, and yes, I'm old enough to have covered him. <laughs> From 86 to 89, I started doing this in 85. <laughs> Sacramento State head coach. Three Big Sky titles. He and Scadaboo, uh -huh. Scada did. Now at Arizona State, and uh, was hired on December the 10th as the new head coach. He and David are very close. Talk often. 31 of 34 field goals in the last two years for Cardi. Out of the hold of Connor Russellman. Uh oh, it's sliding, but it's inside. <laughs> The iron is not even going to be this kind. <laughs> not unkind at all. And that three-point Spencer is huge. I mean big. Cardi it, B? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <That's good. laughs> he split him, man. That's exactly where he did. Who, who knew I was going to hear Cardi B from my analyst today? <laughs> Daniels loved it. Yes, he did. Troy made the right I call. I thought our guys back in the studio loved it, too, you think? <laughs> I know Mike Hill did, and Sarge digs on that. Chris Peterson, Bruce Feldman, the great scribe, is with them today. They've got the State Farm Halftime Show, fellas. How do you do? The Heisman hopeful, known to many as the Prince of the Portal, Michael <laughs> Penix of the Washington Huskies, styling, profiling, oh boy, at Stanford. Let's give Ashton Daniels his due. He's gone toe to toe with the man that was styling and profiling. Yes, indeed. Long limousine, Spencer T. <laughs> Bright light. Bright lights. <laughs> Tim Brando along with Spencer Tillman. And I know you got some snapshots in those bright lights. Well, you know, Tim, they say that Rome was not built in the day. You like that? <laughs> Roma Dunze, it took him a while to get it going. But once he got going, man, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, but again, here's the tough part of it, right? When you're trying to get off press coverage, it's really difficult. Can't get to him so you don't throw to him. Now some other close-up contact and opportunities. But he lets it go through his hands. But eventually, he settles down. Gets man's coverage. And with the fade ball, the nice place but there. Wonderful job of pitching and catching. Now let's see if he can get something going in the second half and to get the big chunk yard that's coming again. Because this was a team, Timmy, that needed to get a statement made. Woo! Woo! That was very good. Well done. Right, nice long <laughs> limousine. <laughs> We're underway with the second half. Stanford will kick off. Will Nixon is back deep. Cardi, who booted that field goal through to cut it to a one score, one possession game to close out the first half. Huskies will get it to open the second, and it will be a touchback. They'll bring it out to the 25 yard line. Well, first half numbers sponsored by Domino's. Get great deals on pizza, bread twists, chicken, desserts, and more. Hey, let's go get it. Let's go get it. What do you see there, Spencer? Salad. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? 21 
minutes to just under nine for Washington. Stanford behind in this game, but I think they've done all that they can do to maintain contact. Yeah, they really have, and, and I think when you look at the differential in terms of time of possession, that's almost nearly 13 minutes, Timmy, yeah. and they're still just eight points within. Technically, just a possession. I think they've acquitted themselves well. Dylan Johnson is the setback out of the shotgun with Penix. And he tries the right side, a little juke and jive to get ahead to the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of three, second down, and seven yards to go. Timmy, this game is so much about motivation, right, and all the others that are down on the field. They got to have a narrative. And then Washington came in here with some statement to make, right, needing style points, sitting in that five hole. So to your point, I think Stanford has done an excellent job. We'll see if there's a second half explosion. We know that Stanford is able to, just like they spotted Colorado 29 points. So let me tell you something, man. I'm excited about this second half. Well, the sun has set here in the Silicon Valley. And it does look like a night game, even though here in the Pacific time zone it's been dusk. And there is again Dylan Johnson getting ahead. Boy, he went north and south once he made that turn and got it up to the 37-yard line for a gain of nine. Bernadell, guys in Bernadell, the Mike linebacker with the tackle. Right, here's what the middle eight is about, folks. It's about the adjustments that you make four minutes prior to the half and in the first four minutes in the second half. So clearly they've seen some opportunity in the softening up of that front for the Cardinal. Let's see if they can continue to exploit that and then set up something on the edges in the throw game. Just their eighth first down of the evening. Johnson again. Parker's down as he forges ahead to the 44, maybe the 45 for a gain of eight. But hold everything. Yep. Scotty Edwards making the tackle. Our uh, referee today, Rayvon Barrett, will have the call. Holding. Offense. Number 71. 10-yard penalty. First down. That will be uh, Kalepo, Nate Kalepo, the left guard, junior from Renton, Washington. You can move a lot of people around, but that time he was holding while he was moving. Yeah, yeah he's 6'6 six, six and 327. He's a big guy. But again, the big ones are easy to point out when they miss. Look how he's a full helmet, yeah. above, taller than most of the <laughs> Looks guys a little like front. Jonathan Ogden, Ogden does small, man. Looks like Jonathan yeah, Ogden to he me. He does. Remember him of Ravens oh, fame? Yeah. First down and 20 now after the penalty. Odunze lines up to the bottom of your screen here. Penix. Under pressure and in trouble. Down sure. he goes at the 11. That coming from Wilfredo Ibar, the edge rusher, got there quickly, a loss of 12. Alfredo put a little sauce on that one, man. He came in there big time. I mean, his ears are pent back. You can see him in a reduced technique right here, but he comes out of that little frog stance with the arm over, trying to block him up right. You can't do that effectively. That was Troy Fadonato, new, who tried to block him on that play, Timmy, but he did a better job of getting it on the back end. Otanu, oh, the left tackle of 317 pounds, are just not quick enough to deal with the edge rusher. Ibar, second and 32. Nixon is the setback, and we've got pre-snap flag. Mm. This is going to be delay of game, it would appear. That's on the quarterback. Delay of game. Offense, number nine. Five-yard penalty. Oh, you can tell Kalen DeBoer down. upset with that. Yeah, you, you need high engagement, right? Particularly coming out of the halftime. You want your quarterback to have a high level of engagement. That means awareness of every aspect of the game that's going to make for a smooth execution. There's no excuse for a delay of game in that situation. You know, again, Spencer, I go back to it, and this isn't to oversell the sparse crowd aspect, but I think sometimes the lack of energy in a building can affect the team that's favored by a bunch. Here's a long one for Odunze. Incomplete. No flag. Yeah, but you see some of the steel poise here again by Penix in the quarterback. Understanding he's in the end zone, man. He understands where the pressure's coming from, but his ability to move in the pocket, not under duress necessarily, but just with an awareness that there are people around him. Just watch him. He now is in a position where a safety could be the net result. Steps up, understands where he is, and again, he's expecting his receiver to come back to this one. I'm not quite sure how he was expecting to do that because that was not a time drop. He's basically improvising. Yeah. Uh, it's tough. You know, despite his off game last week against Arizona State, he's averaging 368 yards per game. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about breaking all kinds of all-time records at Washington. Nice. This pass is caught. It is Jalen Polk, but it will be well shy 
of the necessary yardage and this could not have been a better opening series for the Stanford defense as Penix and company self-destructed. That was a gain of 20. Still a long way to go, fourth and 17. Well, those big plays, and particularly the chunk yardage when the huge one, Jalen Polk was the one that provided in the first half. And, and outside of that, all the other receivers, including Rome, has really taken a while to get the prime pump, the pump primed and, and going and producing for this offense. I mean, who would have thought at this stage of the game that Stanford would have 20 more total yards mm -hmm. than Washington? This punt is a little bit short, but taken with a fair catch by Bryce Farrell. And the Cardinal D gets the job done after the 38-yard boot. Bobby April must be thinking, I love the foliage in the month of October before we get to November. This could be a game to remember. 21-13 our score. Washington with the lead. Stopped on the opening series. and. Here come the Cardinal. Look at those numbers on Ashton Daniels. If it sounds like I'm gushing over the play of Stanford and this quarterback, it's because I am. He does not have the artillery that Michael Penix does, and he's doing a lot of this himself, Spencer, with his legs to compete with the Heisman front runner. And he's also throwing open his receivers, and so he's doing it with his legs and his arm. Yep, he sure is. Focio delivering a big blow there and uh, they're not quitting but the bottom line is the 14 is going to get right back up and come after you man he is so engaged at a high level he understands you see him extend that ball i think that was more just to get his motor going because he understands that there's pressure around him just the awareness that he has and the, the ability to affect you with the legs and the arm that well, makes him special he doesn't mind the contact nope he doesn't that's for sure second down and three looping it for Bachmeyer, and there's a flag. He was going back shoulder, and Jabbar Muhammad, who they've been picking on all day with Tiger Bachmeyer, got in there prematurely and will pick up the flag. Well, especially by the back judge who was sitting back there, his position didn't allow him to see that left hand. Pass interference, defense, number one, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. <laughs> And Bachmeyer actually had a fistful of jersey, man. If he did. Truth be known. Yeah, well, that's how you fight P.I. with O.P.I. Yep. yep. That's why I think, you know, you need to have, in my opinion, if a back judge or the lying judge makes that call, you need to have it corroborated by the guy who's on the back end of that to see it. It's the most difficult call in, it, in it really football. Is. Both, it really is. And we see, I think, more mistakes made at the next level than we do in college football, especially with offensive pass interference. Frederick Irvin. Burrows ahead under the 40 to the about the 39 yard line, a gain of seven, second and three. That was Ale, Ulumoa Ale, MJ, making the tackle number 68. I really like this freshman right here, Tim. He, he he's got a quick twitchness to him. He's on about 5'10, 190 or so, but he's got some of that that fiber that makes you think he's got an explosiveness. If they can get the ball to him in space, he can be a difference maker. Nice, good job. Daniels looking for the corner long. It's Iowa Manor. It's touchdown. Ashton Daniels, pass for pass, play for play, toe to toe against Penix, really getting it done. This is the way they get it done, Timmy, with pass pro first, the back stepping up. You can see the tight end coming down on the wham block. He helps with them. the, the looper coming around. The youngster, Cedric Irvin, blocking, gets a block. Just enough time to allow Ashton to get that ball up in the air. And that's what I love about his accuracy, deep with accuracy. One of the three requisite throws a quarterback's got to make at this level. He does it well. Maybe time to start calling your friends. Might we see more <laughs> carnage tonight that we saw earlier today in Lawrence, Kansas. Daniels going for two. Incomplete. Knocked away by Muhammad. Pass intended for Bryce Farrell. So chasing a couple of points. That happened a lot today in that shocking upset of number six. Well, number five, this just in. You're in a game, and you don't want to hiccup now because the Cardinal are making a run on you. Twenty-one to nineteen, our score. Early third. Check out Iowa Manor here with this route. 
Jimmy just loved the fact that he's able to get off the ball <laughs> and he's just showing the moves the outside inside release uh -huh. to make him honor it's exactly what he did yeah. when you get a guy that's trying to cover you that way to bite on it and he the nearest help you got is a single line safety that has to come with that even though he's got range I'm telling you it, it's just like salivating when you see that opportunity man and this is not nothing new folks if you haven't seen this combo play this is exactly what they did against Colorado no doubt about it just ask Travis Hunter that's a touchback. Iowa Manor, his fifth touchdown reception, ninth touchdown pass for Daniels. And uh, Iowa Manor tonight with eight receptions, 93 yards. This was the 92 yarder for Penix. Second longest pass play in Washington history. Got to go back to Jake Locker, to Marcel Reese in 2007. So let's see if there's an answer from, you'd have to say, the guy that's in the top three coming into this weekend for the Heisman Trophy. Johnson off the left hand side goes right into Bernadelle and Gaithan stands him up. 227 pound junior to transfer in from FIU. And I guarantee you the Stanford Cardinals got their attention now the Huskies came in this with all the motivation in the world to play the perfect bounce back game against a game Arizona State Sun Devils team and boy I'm telling you, they ran into another juggernaut they right have. here and I think to some extent the loss of those safety Spencer has uh, hurt them on the defensive end Johnson hammered hard at the 30 yard line yeah I hear what you're saying and, and it may affect the ability to do what you would like to do on the offensive side because yeah. If you've got a team that can score, Tim, and yet you don't think you can defend as effectively and consistently because of your safeties, then you may want to take a more deliberate approach to the game. So I hear where you're coming from. It's a great take. Third down and four. Johnson remains the setback. Haven't gone to the tight end much of late. And the pace of Tim was remaining the same. And so yep. maybe maybe you say that, that that's not a bad thing, but you know what? you got to have a response to that. Westover is that tight end. Nice delay. Yeah, and on a crossing pattern, they go underneath complete to Jeremy Bernard. And Bernard, who was a bit of a question mark coming in, scampers for the first down out to the 43, a gain of 12. Jeremy Bernard, again, was coming over on a drive route, and it takes a while. When you blitz like this, you're going to get burned on the back end. you got to be mindful of where that's coming from. Zone read action. He hands it off to Jackson. And as he headed towards the boundary, that enabled Gilman, Alakai Gilman, to make the play coming up from that safety spot. Tim, here's that previous play, Tim. Just real quick here. The, the idea is to go fast, but the reason you're going fast is just to get to the line of scrimmage. Get the ball in your hands and let them get downfield and make plays. And they're doing a wonderful job of that. Second and nine after a gain of only one. Johnson again towards the boundary, and Stanford gets great run support from Colin Wright, the cornerback. A good open field tackle. Third and seven. You know, some teams will use pace and tempo as a tactical advantage to get teams winded. That's not necessarily what Washington is doing here. They're trying to get a pre-snap read so that they can let the 12th man make the play call. See, that's what they're doing. That pause there, that snap. Get back to the line of scrimmage mainly just so you can see and let that call when it comes in from the sideline. Hopefully nobody's stealing it. <laughs> you get in there and make yeah. the right decision. Some of these disguised coverages uh, from Bobby April, the defensive coordinator, have been problematic. Straight blitz from the safety. This pass is thrown under duress for Polk, and it's incomplete. I'll tell you what, Bobby April's dialing up some pressure yes, here. Yes, he is. And he's affecting Michael Penix there you can see it because it's about six yards back past where it needs to be for completion this is what you do you affect the quarterback coming from depth Timmy it doesn't matter if you're coming from depth or not that pressure that Scotty Edwards coming from that deep safety position number 21 putting pressure on him and it came late but these under the radar type guys who are backups are stepping up right now in this second half making plays Bobby April's uh, the son of the NFL Special teams coach of coaches, Bobby April. 
You got to be proud of his son. I think he's here today. Yeah, I heard that. Mistaken. Sure did. And the fair catch is made by Farrell up at the 16 yard line, a 37 yard boot. There's a little boom, boom, boom left, I think. <laughs> There's no o quitting in these October guys. October carnage before Halloween, maybe. It's a series that goes way back to 1893. Stanford is Washington's oldest rival. There are 93 all-time meetings with Washington leading the series 45 to 44. How about that, huh? You called that one too, didn't you? <laughs> I was around for Don James's run at Washington. Yes. Not that far back, though. We got a flag down and Cedric Irvin carries it. Yeah, that 91 team Don James had yeah, strong boy, oh boy. onion juice, man. My they old uh, my old running mate in the booth at one time, Ed Cunningham was a captain mm -hmm. and center for that national championship team that shared a title with Georgia Tech, Bobby Ross's team out of the ACC. You might recall. There is no foul on the play. <laughs> or maybe, you know, now I look back on that, I think maybe it was Colorado they shared it with. Spencer. Was it? Yep. Yeah, I might be wrong. Yeah, yep. I think I might be wrong. At this stage of my life, it happens from time to time. But Ed was on that team, playing center. Went on to play for the Cardinals and the Bears for four years. Was it Rashawn Salam? Was on that team? Uh huh. On that Colorado yep. team, that yep. was the fifth down year, you might yep. recall, yep. with Missouri. Yep. Under duress, Daniels has to unload it. It was intended. Trice with the pressure, but it was intended for the wide receiver, Io Manor. Little, Lots of heat coming. Yeah, the little cursory yeah. handoff there could have been avoided altogether again. Third down and nine. He hasn't been faced with too many third and longs. They've been getting big chunks of yardage on first and second down. Pressure. Daniels looping nice. this one long. Isle Manor incomplete. Yeah, Marker flying. down. Jabbar point. Muhammad yep. got his hand in there prematurely. I don't think he needed to. The pass was behind, and we see this a lot, Spencer, when the receiver is coming back to the ball and the defender loses sight of where the ball is. Well, that means you have trust in them. You got to play. Interference. Defense. Well, number one. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. You got to find that ball a little sooner yeah, than, than just he did. did. And he actually got his right hand in there to be in a. He did. a tenable position he did. to defend his posture, but the side judge, you can see, yep. she's coming in there with that flag, man. She's going to call it every single time, and uh, it's unfortunate because I think other than that, it was excellent defensive coverage. And the line judge, Malik Washington, with that call, and you're right. You see that a lot, both at the NFL and college level. That pass, a quick curl to Bachmeyer, and before being pushed back, they will spot him at the 37-yard line. We're going to get a late marker. Nope. We did get a oh, flag. You did get one. Yes, we wow. did. Uh, he he did not disengage, and the marker flew. Well, Levi Rogers is probably going to get this one if if it is. Go forth, Raylan. Go, go forth. forth, number ten. Yep. After yeah, the play is over, fifty-seven is the one that's going to get it. Foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense number fifty-seven. Oh, yeah. Like I said, Levi it. Rogers. Levi Rogers, you're right. Penalty. It'll be second down. You're right. I stand corrected. <laughs> I thought go forth uh, did not. Disengage, but no, this you're absolutely right. That was well after the play. And Jackson is standing there, and again, you got to have your head on a swivel. Mm -hmm. Elijah Jackson, the right cornerback, was just kind of standing upright, man, and got welcomed. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> well, they spotted back to the 23 yard line now for second and 19. Much more difficult for the Stanford team when they get behind the chains than it would be for Washington. E.J. Smith has re-entered the game at setback. Daniels. And that was well read. That was outstanding defense. Carson Bruner not fooled at all by the bootleg action. And E.J. Smith was draped. Yeah, sometimes you got to mix things up and turn your back to coverage to try to at least influence him. You're going to do it from what we call a closed formation because premium is placed on protection, right? Because these edge rushers, rushers, you just can't let them pin their ears back. So I appreciate it, what they're trying to accomplish, but stick with what you do, work on the edges, occasional run game, and you can move the ball. Well, only one of six in the second half now. Daniels flushed. 
looking for a little help. Let's it fly incomplete. Thrown in the general direction up around midfield to Bachmeyer. And it'll be a punt formation coming now for Stanford. So not at all the kind of series they were hoping for after getting the ball back. Down only two. Yeah, Tim, but you, if you can keep it close for Troy Taylor. Troy Taylor wants to keep this thing close. And that and, and again, they understand they're at home, but that, that's the home field advantage is not an issue in this. It's really about which team is most disciplined and trust what they prepared for in the week coming up to this contest. Because as long as they're close, man, they're going to have a shot to win. Boston decides to reel it in, gets it up to the 47 yard line. A pretty nice return he's up, he's up. after a pretty good boot. Well, uh, Levi Rogers, after this late hit, got him behind the chains. When he got back to the sideline, got an earful from Troy Taylor. Doesn't matter what your scores are on the SAT when that happens. Yes, it is. Andre Risen, I'm sure, would love that. <laughs> Well done, Spencer T. <laughs> if I had a little practice, I could have given you my bottom register. But. Well, you, hey, if the format changes, you could be a part of that show. <laughs> 21 to 19. Washington by two. Here comes pressure. Penix is flushed, and that's rest over the intended receiver. A little overthrown, and it'll be second and 10. You know, you got to love what Bobby April is doing, Spencer, as it relates to creating different pressure points. Yeah, without compromising your coverage. Can you do it? Can you bring numbers to effect? The nose tackle gets up the middle. You're not going to block him with the back. That's just enough to get Penix to move in that pocket and put him off of his launch point. As a result, you get an errant pass. That was Tobin Phillips, number 40. Defensive tackle that came in from the down four. Rodgers is in the game and running back. This pass is thrown and dropped. And that would have been a first down at the 38 of Stanford. Jalen Polk just a uh, uh, lapse of concentration there, and it'll be third and ten. And Jalen had that huge pass, the one that's the longest in a long time around here in Washington. He just dropped that one, as you said, Tim, right in his hands. That's yeah. inexplicable. And Scotty Edwards was back in coverage on that play and didn't represent a threat. That's just all about the receiver losing a handle on. This is not at all the Washington team you saw play Oregon and get that win against the Ducks a few weeks back, and they've. And gotten away with some poor outings of late. Trying to do it again on the road here at Stanford. Perhaps not as easy as, as it was uh, at home. Mm. This throw is caught. It's beautiful. And Polk atones for that drop. Gets it inside the 40 to the 39. A pickup of 15. And boy, what a great patience throw there. Because he yeah. had Stanford Cardinals hanging all over him, Tim. He stayed in the pocket that Penix and just delivered a strike, man. Here they go quickly. Right away, it's Nixon. Inside the 35 to the 33, Gilman, 33 the stop, a gain of six. Second down and four coming up. A little change up on that last series. They finally used pace and tempo as an active advantage as opposed to just getting the front. Uh-oh. Nice stop. Back shoulder, and it's caught by Odunze. Boy, that's beautifully thrown by Penix and that's what sets him apart up and over Colin Wright. Yeah, Colin Wright is, is knows he's in man coverage. He's chicken fighting with the arms right there. He too never turns back and that's another nice grab. That one good for 23 yards Tim. How about the cluster formation wide to the numbers. Let's see if they reduce this down. Just trying to get a look. If they run something out of this I would be shocked. Maybe draw. There it is. Sets up for a pick play doesn't it? They go fade the other way. It he is it. Caught caught it. touchdown. Jalen Polk. After that drop on the out pattern, he comes away with two big catches. And the Huskies are back on point. And the lead is up to eight with the point pending. Jimmy, they clear this out. It's a stop route. They try to isolate him with the stutter step. And then it was just pulling just a little bit too much inside. Just a little bit too much inside. And does he have con total control of this? Yep, he does. He's yes, got he control. Does. He's on his back. That was Duran Manley in that chicken fight with him, the fifth year senior out of Claremont, California. The all important extra point to make it a two possession game. Second touchdown tonight for Cole. Eighth on the year. And the score now 28 to 19. And we'll keep it here.
used the back shoulder throw on a couple of occasions here, and Penix is just so good and so accurate. And when you got athletes on the other end of it, you don't have to be perfect all the time, but this one was about as good as it gets right there, Timmy. That's how you throw the back shoulder fade in motion. Adunze did a wonderful job with that one, and Penix again here with no imminent threat in front of him. Another opportunity, he gets it in. Right time past Manley on that one. Manley had a little bit of a jersey, made it look like it was a little bit more contested throw than it should have, should have been. But that guy right there is special, man. He can make all those throws and attenuate his throws, Tim, you know, when he needs to. Spencer, uh, McMillan is not completely healthy tonight for yep. Washington. So and that affects that trio, It man, does, because Odunze and Polk together, when they've got that third wheel, oh it makes Washington... I know you're you're high on them. You think they can win it all. I do too. I do, without question. But it's their big play capability, I think, that sets them apart. They don't necessarily have to have long drives because of their explosiveness. Well, with a with a healthy Jalen McMillan in the slot, that means on the back end you have to make choices. You got to make decisions. Yeah. Who you're going to man up and cover? And one of those three guys, I don't know a program that has three great defenders that can lock all three of them right. down. I would agree. Boy. I would agree. And in Odunze, we're talking about probably one of the top five receivers, period. Ashton Daniels has had his moments, obviously. He's going to need one right now to answer this touchdown drive. He's done it with his legs and with his arms so far in tonight's game, trying to match throw for throw against the likes of Michael Penix. Yeah, well, Troy Taylor, offensive coordinator and the head coach, has given him the green light, particularly on that inside the goal line, green zone score. When you see that gaping hole right there, go ahead and take it, big fella. He's not afraid to do it, as you alluded to earlier. He likes the physical contact. He's got accuracy. He throws receivers open. He's a weapon. Daniels on a quick curl to Bachmeyer. Thrown down at the 29-yard line is Tiger. That's uh, Lavoccio with the stop. Just an excellent pitch and catch. I mean, that's classic West Coast style offense. Find the two closest defenders and sit down right between them and then allow the quarterback to split the difference when he throws that ball. He's the most targeted by far. He's got nine receptions for 97 yards. Does Bachmeyer. Daniels looking longer this time. He's got, got Isle Manor wide open. He's inside the 20. They took a shot and it paid dividends. And our Manor's he got the wind knocked at him a little bit. It may yeah. be a little bit of the shoulder. And he may have bobbled it, Timmy, but I think he caught that yes, one. He, he stayed did. with it long enough to bring it in. This is just a, a man shot right here, man. Yeah, he got it the second time around. And hanging on to it is how he knocked uh, the wind out of his sails there. And he's in, in between two defenders, and you can see, oh. uh, again, that's Mikhail Esteem there. And this is the shoulder that he falls on, yeah. Tim. And, and it may got a little bit of the side of the helmet there as well. 53 yards, ninth catch for Isle Manor. And when you're, you're grasping the ball, that tells you how committed it, he is. He's got his hands around the ball. He's not going to give that thing up, but he's willing to go down on the shoulder on the side of his helmet, man. That's a highly engaged player right there. Well, so, that big touchdown catch that he made, you might recall, against uh, Colorado was, was right up there with... Uh, the giant Super Bowl catch that Eli Manning remembers all too well. Yep, he's got a trailer, and it ends up being like triple covers, Timmy. you got a trailer that's coming from that middle. We talk about the middle linebacker, and this scheme will try to run and cover that hash mark area. But but again, because you've got defenders on the outside of the edge, in that particular case, Mikel Esteem, number 24, was working on it. Denied him that opportunity, but he went up and made a great play. You remember David Tyree, that catch that he made in the Super Bowl? It was very similar to the catch he made against Colorado with Travis Hunter. Yeah, well, here's the, the helmet of impact of what he's had tonight, Tim. Yeah. And if you can't have him available to stretch the offenses on the edge and to adjust on fade balls like this yeah. and to, to exploit a triple coverage context, that puts a lot of pressure. That's three men he's occupied, yeah. and you better believe you got to be mindful of he's there, even if you can't shut him down. It makes a big difference if he's not in the lineup. Now, Justin Lanson has come into the game. This is the second time we've seen him. The other time was for one play. It was on a third down. They went quarterback power. Which they often do that when he comes in. Here, they'll do the same on the zone read. Going to the left-hand side, and he has rustled down at the 17 by Jabbar Muhammad. And Timmy's got to be patient on those deals, and I know the instinct is to run away from those big guys, but when you're running that type of downhill play, you got to wait because those linemen are pulling. 
And big number 76 is out in front of you. 77 is on that other edge side as well. Those guys are there for a reason. Get in behind them. Don't outrun them. Because that's not where your help is. Second down and nine. Daniels back in at quarterback. Nice. On the quick look in. It is caught. Roush, the tight end, got it. He ran into the back judge, which may have aided and abetted Washington. The umpire was in position to help that time. Roush, they needed him to step up. You know, with Benjamin Gorsuch <laughs> out, Timmy, for the year, it seems, having his big presence right there. They haven't gone to the tight end lot, and that's, oh. it. that's what Troy does. Troy Taylor really was known for his integration of the tight end into the West Coast scheme. Umpire. Mr. Eisenheimer. Nice. That pass is thrown into traffic. And well, well, well done again, Jason Raines, 82, with his first catch. Six yards. Tupatala, Timmy, pops him really good right there in the shoulder. And he just hangs in there. You love to see a player take a punishment like that when you know it's coming, to be able to absorb that and sacrifice for your team. Now you can challenge your team. That's yeah. the first and goal, a fresh set of downs. Market just inside the four yard line. Frederick Urban is the setback. Trips to the top of your screen. Daniels to run it. Touchdown. He waltzes in. They're not going away. Nope. When you're smart, it's about counting. And, and there's a lot of good guys that know math around here. And you run away from numbers. That's how you do it. It's not that complicated. Especially when you get in the green area. That's the five yard line in. You run away from where the predominant numbers are. Daniel's second touchdown rushing tonight. The only two that he's had all season. Joshua Cardi for the extra point. And that left side, Spencer just caved Washington up front to make this one happen. Well, we talked about three plays before following your blocks and having the patience to wait on them. This time he does. You can see you got your running back in there blocking for you, man. You, you love to have the guys that are able to step up, step up with consistency. Cedric Irvin, number 26, is the guy who was in the backfield, who was the lead blocker there. You got an if block. Uh, that's Jake uh, Makiakula does a wonderful job of coming up in there as well. He gets in there and gets a block. And following them is really what makes the difference. Yeah, Mike La got some help also from Baklinko, 78 Luke Baklinko. Playing in place of Fisher Anderson there, and you see uh, Isle Manor leaving the field. By the way, both he and Bachmeyer targeted tonight 13 times, nine receptions each. The rest of the team with uh, 10 targets and five receptions. So they've been the two go tos, and with your right, you lose perhaps the ability to stretch that secondary out some with Isle Manor gone. Nixon is back deep for Washington, and he'll start from his one. Hammered just as he makes it to the 20-yard line. And that's where the Huskies take over in what is now a two-point game with a minute and change remaining. Take a look at that top six, okay? <laughs> Carnage, folks. Carnage. Oklahoma goes down, beaten by Kansas, with a backup quarterback who threw two picks in the fourth quarter. How about that win for Lance Leipold? That's a program-making win for them. And uh, Ohio State... Leeds, Wisconsin, that game was tied for a long period of time. <laughs> I just don't see all these teams that are undefeated remaining that way through the month of November. We'll see. Dylan Johnson is the setback as Pinnock sets up at the 20-yard line. Pitcher, we talked about it many times. The landscape is flat, and the distance between the top teams and the others. Timeout, Washington. It's their first of the half. Not as great. And there they time. have to use the timeout because the play clock was winding again, Spencer. They've just had those lapses mentally tonight, which can be a byproduct of the environment that you're in. Yeah, they really can. Again, the, the numbers of the environment tonight ne not necessarily an, an impact him, but this is about the individual players themselves, what they bring and how can they stay engaged and what is it that's motivating them. Every one of them are different, man. And there are some things that every great player has to have universally but you never know what buttons are going to make one guy do better yeah. than the other yeah. uh, you and I took a long look at that game with Arizona State and by the way 
yeah, Washington struggled, and they were fortunate to win the game. But Arizona State is not your typical one and six team either. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that. We've seen them play. Everybody's a little bit better. Bottom end of these conferences are stronger than most of the pundits believe. Play fake out of the shotgun. Pinnock with plenty of time. And Arduze brings it in up around the 45 yard line. That get the 46 as well. They'll spot it. 25 yards. Uh, this is a great job of communicating with Adunze, Timmy. Watch him. He's going to catch this ball, but if they slow this thing down, maybe we'll get a chance to see it. Looking long. There's space. Incomplete. Polk had a step on the defender. Zarin Manley, number four. He beat him earlier, you might recall, on that touchdown catch. Second down and ten coming up. Johnson remains the setback. West over the tight end and a slot left. Nice yeah. read. Johnson! Beautiful move. Boy, he put his foot down and made that cut. And you just nailed that, Timmy. Dylan Johnson did a wonderful job of hugging the block, right? And so when you go up into that line of scrimmage, man, watch him with the counter shuffle move and then that turn and oh. that little quick step and then the second step afterwards gave him an additional three yards. But it was that initial burst to hug that double team that allowed him to get upfield. 13 yards on that carry, 56 on the night on 15 carries. Westover, the tight end in the slot right this time. And now beautiful, wow, that's a beautiful a stop. Point. And that's Polk wow. again two times on quick out patterns that he's had those lapses. And they've cleared out the field for him. And again, maybe because he had the home run catch and, and score, you know, you, you put a little trust in him, put a little nugget in his mind about what he's what is possible. And then you clear out everything from the back end. You have trips down here. He's alone up there, man. Well, you got to catch that ball. No one feels worse than him. Standout receiver at Lufkin High School. Talk about Friday Night Lights. <laughs> School that produced Des Bryant, Kiki Kute. Mm -hmm. Two outstanding receivers. Yes, indeed. Of course, Des at Oklahoma State before becoming a cowboy. Rogers. Nice defensive work by Stanford that time. Ty Bo Rogers, the freshman from Bakersfield. Leave them with a third and eight when we come back through three quarters. Stanford is right there. Yes, it is. These officials want to do play-by-play, -play, don't they? <laughs> Those microphones we've got down there are so long, good. Man. AI could be replacing us at any moment. A lot of Timmy <laughs> Beats down there. The ones that are here are having a heck of a time. 28 to 26, our score. Washington leading by two. Spencer, I want to make a point. Uh -huh. You and I discussed it off air. I thought it was worthwhile to bring up on the air. I cannot recall in all my years of calling football where a number five team this deep into the college football season was on the road playing against this small of a crowd in a conference game ever. Ever. <laughs> and I, well, I little, think it little says little a lot. Said, Welcome to the ACC. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> but I think, it, I think it says a lot about the way the Stanford kids have responded and really what Washington is fighting through tonight in many respects. That's Those a good take. Maybe we'll unpack it when we have a second. Will Nixon the setback. It's third and eight as we open the fourth. Penix with time. Crossing route. It's caught. It's Bernard. And Jeremy is down at the 24-yard line. A first down. Move the chains. Frostos Ramos with the stop. The nickelback. Boy, this is the perfect little pocket. A little umbrella. Gives Penix the time that he needs to get this clearing route. Whether they're drive routes or shallow crossing routes, they can be very difficult to cover because not many linebackers, smaller guys who play in that middle section, can run well with a slot receiver or an X receiver, Tim. It takes a lot of skill and a lot of hybrid ability to do that. First down, 10. Washington, when they play fast, they play well. Penix, oh, okay. wide open and touchdown, Devin Culp. The senior out of Gonzaga Prep, Spokane, Washington, on what had to be a busted cover.
Well, hopefully we can determine who's culpable on this particular play, Tim. And I don't think it's anybody's fault necessary. Well, actually, it's the inside linebacker. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's Tristan. I mean, Tristan is, is the guy that's back there. He's the heart and soul of it. Tristan Sinclair. He's got to be the guy that's mindful. Anytime someone goes up to the hash past 10 yards in match coverage, he's the guy that's got to have it. And that's Culp's first touchdown of the season. And just like that, it's back to a nine-point game. But once again, the Cardinal offense will be called upon to maintain contact. The Huskies, so talented, but given a hard time tonight at Stanford. I guess that's a royal treatment there. Huh? <laughs> Seven plays, 79 yards. Culp on the 24-yard touchdown reception, his first of this season. Couldn't have been more wide, wide open on that play, too, Timmy. Well, this is the fifth time Penix has thrown four-plus touchdown passes this year, most recently two weeks ago in that victory against Oregon. His career high is five touchdown passes against Boise State in a season opener. And let's take a look at that uh, breakdown you saw on the touchdown. Well, somebody has to make a decision. The linebackers are going to do it, and I think you know, we will see this. We're looking at Tristan Sinclair, number eight. Who's the most athletic guy in that area? Somebody's got to take him on the hash. Once he gets past 10 yards, they call that match coverage. That is the linebacker's responsibility. But if your eyes are trained on what's happening in the backfield, you can oftentimes get lost because you're thinking that guy's going to stay in and block. But once that tight end releases, man, that's yours. They're, they've got high expectations from him from a defensive standpoint. They just need to see more from him. Daniels stepping up, getting out of some trouble, and now wisely hitting the deck after picking up three yards after being under duress. Dominique Hampton, the strong safety out of Glendale, Arizona's Centennial High School with the stop. I just love Ashland Daniels' game, man. He, yeah, he's mindful of what he is and what he is not. He knows he's a long guy, and, and when you're trying to avoid more athletic guys underneath, you don't, you're not going to take that punishment. Just get down. Live another day. He's just so mindful of what the limits of his abilities are. He thread that, threaded that needle and passes incomplete. Yep. Stripped out of there. And we've got an injured Cardinal, the man for whom the pass was intended, Cedric Irvin, slow to get up. Yeah, that's, a, that's the young twitchy freshman we talked about. He'll, he'll bounce up. He's athletic. Uh, speaking of injuries, that Iowa Manor moment that led them to their last score, but unfortunately led him to the locker room. Well, just the mindfulness, though, to stay with that one. You know, you can see it close up, and we can critique this all day, Timmy. He, he barely took his eyes off the ball, but just being mindful that he had handle on it and knew where it was and to maintain control yeah. and complete the catch. He gave himself up yeah, for he it. He gave it up. If you're going to get hit, you might as well catch it, man. Third down and seven. Washington showing blitz up the middle. That back out of it. Yep. yep. Edge corner pressure pass is caught. Ball ball's out. It's Ruben. The ball is it. out. He got it back. Though. He did get it back, but well short of the first down. Jabbar Muhammad was there and ready to pounce on it. Just a gain of one, and Troy Taylor is going to have to punt it away here. Why is that incomplete? It's not incomplete. Well, if it's anything, it, it would be a fumble he because he caught it. He had two full steps after yeah, he caught it. I thought so. They ruled it incomplete, though, and they'll punt wow. it away. Wow. Flintoff, Aiden Flintoff to punt it away. Averaging 47. He's got a good foot, too. Good special teams for Stanford. Short of one punt tonight. Here goes Denzel Boston. Gets away from one Cardinal, then streaks down the sideline. And great, and I do mean great field position for the Huskies and an opportunity really to take total control of this game here in the fourth. Up until now, it has been a close one. 41-yard boot, 26-yard scamper. Here comes Penix again. Michael Penix may be going for the kill at this stage. Four touchdown tosses, looking for a fifth here. Odunze. Hulk, the 92-yarder. Jalen reeled that one in, a beautiful back shoulder throw. He makes it look so easy. That's Culp yep. in his first touchdown reception of the year. 
All the adjectives, Tim. I think patience should be added to oh, yeah. Penix's yeah. resume as well. Got a lot of patience. And man. a lot of talent to go with it. He jumped a little scissors tiss. Right to the tight end, Westover. And he's uh, past the 41. And inside the 40, they'll mark him at the 38-yard line. First down, a gain of 14. And we see Cedric Irvin make his way into the locker room. They're trying to bring, is Bobby Abel, the defensive coordinator, all types of pressure. Just a three-man look here, though, Tim. Curl pattern caught Odunze. Down he goes at the 30, but a healthy gain of nine. Just a yard shy of a first down. Washington trying to take the top off of this now, and I think at some point in time, you're starting to see the ability for them to get numbers at the receiver position take its toll on this back end. Mm -hmm. And you made a great point earlier, Spencer. The lion's share of what's in front of them is, in fact, in front of them. They're mm -hmm. prohibitive favorite tonight, but it's going to get tougher with the schedule that lies ahead. And they probably kept a little in their back pocket tonight. Rodgers trying to turn it upfield and does. Gets it inside the 20 yard line and another first down. Gain of 10. And you can see the body language here on Stanford. They they're on their heels at this point. Yeah, it's a little pensive, you might add. Mm -hmm. And again, that's not a comment or commentary. It's just an observation. That's what we do. These guys are working hard. There's no question about it, but you can just tell. Look at that quick delivery. Mm -hmm. Side-armed it. Oh, balls out. Balls, balls out. Balls out. It's picked up by the Cardinal, and they'll live to fight another day. How about that? Leaker. Watch the hit. Leaker comes away with the recovery. There's the slap. Ball comes out. Leaker gets it. Stanford still in it. Down nine. Bobby April is happy to see his defense get the first turnover of the game by either team. Tavarua Tafiti, number 11, the edge rusher out of Wapahu, Hawaii, stripping it right there. And then Mitch Leaker out of Laguna Hills High School, Laguna Hills, California, coming away with a recovery. That is a game saver yep. for the moment. Now that's an example of what a four-star sport type athlete needs to be able to do in college football today. Daniels is in some trouble, gets away. Boy, he is slippery, a stiff arm to go with it. And he's finally dragged out of bounds at the 25. Yulafoshio, number five, will get credit for the stop. And how about just the presence in the pocket, not trying to do anything extra necessarily, but watch this dip arm here, mm -hmm. and then one, two, three, four, five <laughs> extra yards after that. So yak yardage. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if not for the shirt tail, oh right? Oh, my gosh. What a wonderful <laughs> job of just being physical, man, and turning into a defender. That's outstanding. Second down and two. Caleb Hampton remains the setback. Minus one go-to receiver. Daniels keeps it on the ground, has a first down. Out to the 31-yard line. Carson Bruner, 42, the linebacker with the stop. You know, you think of Lampson as more of the runner at quarterback than Daniels. Watch, watch the guard play here, Tim. This if block, right? Mm -hmm. If you're covered, if around, and then follow. But you're back in front of him, going through there. Looks like it's just a maybe four or five yards gain. But what that does, it softens up the middle. And when you start working on those shallow crossing routes coming back, now everybody's attention's away from it. You've got a chance to make a, a big time play. Yeah, he took out Yulavoshio there. E.J. Smith. Past the 30 to around the 33. Carson Bruner again making the tackle. EJ's waiting on his off guard who's pulling. You know, sometimes you almost have to get slow intentionally. I remember back in the olden days, Edgerin James used to run with that intentionality. Slow two and fast through. His, that, that asset is really a precious gift to have when you get anxious as a running back. Wait on those off guards. That's where your help is. They go empty on second and eight. Daniels has 84 yards on 15 carries, doubling his previous rush. Nice. See, that's where the route comes open. And look at that. That's it. That's Roush, the tight end. Well, you couple that, Spencer, with Daniels running tonight, yep. statistically his best night. See, that's why that if block we just mentioned becomes valuable, because now if I'm a linebacker, I've got to contend with that. So I step up. Now everything over the middle of the field becomes, you know, you can compromise it. 
And that's that's the beauty of this kind of match game that's been played right now with one of the I think one of the brightest coaches in the business who's paid his dues Troy Taylor. 277 yards in the air for Daniels. I told you about the rushing yardage at 84 a personal high. And we've got a marker down. It looks like a false start. Preliminary indication given. False start. Offense. Number zero. Five yard penalty. Hmm. First down. Ruben, Moodya Ruben, the wide receiver, up at the top. Yeah, you can see him out here, Tim, on the numbers. And again, you got to hold your water, baby. <laughs> I'd also say get rid of the shirt tail. <laughs> it already helped stop your quarterback who was getting away from pressure. And you see the penalty yardage. We had a lot of it early. It's cleaned up a little here in the second half. Play fake. It's Daniels rushed. looking long. It is caught inside the 15 and down at the 13. What a throw. Jackson Harris, number 83 with the catch, 44 yards. Watch Jackson Harris go up with pressure bending on the outside. Again, you're able to stay in the pocket with that pressure, feeling it, and allowing a guy to high point, even though it climbed on his shoulder pads between two defenders. That's a guy that wants to go get it and make a difference. Well, you ask what's going to happen once you lose a go-to receiver like Io Manor. Well, that was an Io Manor kind of catch by Harris. Daniels. Forges ahead inside the 10 yard line. Yulofosio with the stop. Take a look at this route. Well, here he is looking inside against a bell technique. That means the cornerback is sees him the whole way. He understands the, the flight of the path of the ball. He's waiting back there playing like a center field technique. But that ball is just placed right where it needed to be, throwing the receiver open and the ability to go up and catch it between two defenders. What a night for the three time high school state champion out of Buford, Georgia, Ashton Daniels. Mm -hmm. Second down and seven from the ten. And get a first down at the three. Daniels with a pup face. Nice release. Oh, big time. Fires it late. That should be a first down. Should be first and goal. E.J. Smith making the catch. It's built into the play set, Timmy. When you release as a quarterback, a game's and a deal is working. It's coming your way. He naturally did Ashton float away from that pressure to find his running back into that corner. Outstanding job of diagnosing where the pressure is coming from and organically moving away from it. Boy, think about the momentum swift. That shift was unreal. Justin Lamson comes in at quarterback. That usually means power run by the quarterback. Smith is with him. Let's see if he follows him. He will. Touchdown. Boy, Emmett Smith's got to be happy to see his son play the role of Moose Johnston there. <laughs> and usher his quarterback, Lamson, in. The first to get there to him to say thank you is Ashton Daniels. Well, no question they're coming with the numbers and the if blocks. That's Levi Rogers, the center. Watch him if after he snaps it blocks mm -hmm. back. And then the off guard, Trevor Mayberry, the left guard, does a wonderful job. All 6'3", 315 pounds of him out of Jesuit. I love this kid, man. Outstanding. I've been tracking him a long time, Timmy. Cardi for the extra point. Nice snap, but he gets it through. That was important. Snap handled there beautifully by Connor Russellman. It started with Tafiti forcing the fumble. Leaker picked it up. Then all of a sudden, here comes Stanford. Ashton Daniels putting on a show in the air and then on the ground. Lamson comes in as a reinforcement and says, give me a ball. Let me play a little power football, Timmy. Power football, Spencer T. And could we have some graffiti? Yeah. Spencer, as Bill Parcells once said, this is why you lift all them weights, and it's why you have two quarterbacks. <laughs> this was the failed two-point conversion. Early third, it was 21-19. This could have tied the game, and that was a wonderful defensive play by Jabbar Muhammad to take it away and that's the difference in this game right now yeah and Jabbar Muhammad they had been picking on him all night long and again I think he's acquitted himself for the most part in the aggregate Tim but just to see how Stanford has remained competitive for Troy Taylor has been really impressive given what Washington 
needed to do coming into this contest. We talked about the style points and so forth in Porton. Are they lining up for an onsides here? Yeah, it looks like it. It sure does. There it is. Pulling that all out. <laughs> oh, what a great hands play. Was that Odunze? I think it might have been. Or Mohammed. Number one. That was Odunze. Odunze, yes. Yeah, you know, uh, the hands team comes up there because that it got the Sunday hop you wanted. I'm a little curious as to why you go this early with the onsides, but that was the that's the kind of bounce you wanted, no doubt about it. Well, the thing I would have done, I would have checked to see who the personnel's out there because Odunze yeah. obviously is their lead receiver. You got your hand, yeah. they've got everything, got personnel, they got the alignment. If you're going to give them that, the element of surprise is lost in that context. So I would have gotten out of that formation and just yeah. kicked it off. Nixon is the setback. Hardy is one of Stanford's best players. He's a, a great kicker. Here's Pennix trying to get another one. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Jeremy Bernard that time. 888 total yards in this game, Spencer. Stanford with 471 total yards to 417 for Washington. Daniels, 343 yards passing, 88 rushing for 427 total yards. Think about that. He's responsible for that much yardage all told. Quick out to Culp, the tight end. Breaks one tackle, does get into Stanford territory, but a negligible game. Lieber. Only two, so third down and eight coming up as Liegberg came up to make the play. Yeah, Mitch came up really well and stayed in a nice leverage position, Tim. Playing inside out and allowing through the sideline to be his friend. Watch him come through. And the, what we're talking about leverage, that means don't let the guy go underneath you. Understand that the boundary is there to protect you. Third, Outstanding defense. Third and eight. Big defensive sequence here for Stanford. Penix has been up to it every time they've needed a play. Got to watch the back out of the backfield here. Nixon is the setback. He stays in the block. Penix with time. That throw is incomplete. Yeah. Marker down. That back judge on that side of man has been nailing them left and right. Zarin Manley, number four, must have had a piece of the shoulder or his arm wrapped around the would-be receiver, mm. Odunze. They have allowed a lot. Yeah, they have, Tim. I just think on that call. Pass interference, defense, number four. Results, automatic first down. His I reaction mean, says me, it's a good call. The depth of field. I mean, listen, it may play out that it was a justified call, but when you're making this call from behind, yeah, I, I, I think that's questionable, man. Yeah. I don't think the, uh, the right arm affected the, the ability of the player to catch the ball or not. That left arm gets in there fairly clean. Yes, mm -hmm. it's tight coverage, but I don't know if that's yeah. enough to call a flag. Yeah, a lot of jousting there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he did have a bit of a guilty look. One thing about the Stanford kids, they'll keep it all in perspective, right? Yeah. First and 10, 5.46 to play with a ball at the 33-yard line of Stanford. Penix again. That pass is caught. A beautiful throw to Jeremy Bernard. And that's just the kind of big league throw to the wide side of the field, to the field side, as you love to call it, Spencer. Mm -hmm. That's a grown man's throw right there, Timmy. And he's a lefty, too. So he's standing on that hash, and he goes all the way across the opposite side of the field. And there he is. He delivers a strike. First and 10. Allowing the 12th man to get them in the right play, and that's a wise thing. That's why they hurried to the line of scrimmage once again. From the 17-yard line. Here comes a late blitzer. Nice pickup. Well, Dunze. It oh, is intercepted. intercepted. Wow. Taken away wow. by Manley. The man guilty of the interference atones. <laughs> And Timmy, I got to tell you, man, you know, in my preparation of my notes, I made a little note by Manley. And, and brother, you can take me to task. I wasn't quite sure how Manley you were with respect to some things I saw, just in terms of being more aggressive. Yeah. But, man, that was a gift right yeah. in his arms. And he played the technique exceptionally well. I'd say Bobby April gave him a memo <laughs> he, and he, he took did. it, right? He sure did. I mean, I'm telling you, he, he played well, with a great awareness on that play. Bobby was very transparent with us when he was talking about how intelligent his players were. He said, you know, we need some more dogs. Yep. We need some guys to play with edge. That's what happened in that second half with Colorado. 
They were embarrassed. They took it personally, and they played with an edge. And, and we've seen signs of that again tonight. And you make a great point as we look at Bobby April right now. And, Tim, it's just across the landscape of college football, you still got to have a few dogs in the lineup, right? Everybody's winning in the margins. We get it. The landscape is flat, but players still play the game. Quick curl, and it's Bachmeyer again. Boy, the Tiger with... Uh, more targets than anyone on the field and when you consider now he's a different kind of receiver than Iowa Manor he's more of a possession guy it's going to catch the ball between the hashes in the seam but man he is money 14 targets 10 receptions 98 yards tonight Tim the mean of their drives is somewhere in the neighborhood of 212 to 10 seconds or something like that if they can do that and get this down to under two minutes and get in position for a field goal that's, this is the anatomy of what you're looking at right now. Smith this. had to step out shy of the first down. It'll be third and two. This is built for the West Coast style offense. This is classic old Bill Walsh, Jerry Rice, Roger Craig, move the ball down the football field. All right. John Taylor's involved in that process as well. Twins look to formation to the field trips. Let's see if they can get it down. Daniels. In some trouble this time. Will not get there. It'll be fourth and a little more than one and a half. Almost two. I think it's no gain. Well, they got to go, don't you think? I yep, mean, I think you do. You got three timeouts remaining. You could punt it away, but you may not get it back if you do. Yeah, you had a Steve Young, you can get away with this. Yeah. Not, not with this guy. I mean, I like no. him, but I, I like it when he's in a situation where you've affected the numbers right. and set it up. Right. I was going to say it might be time for Lampson, but yep. we'll, it, it could we'll have been, see. Tim. Fourth down and two. I guarantee he's got one in his back pocket. Yeah. Somebody's going to come open. They, they need to protect long enough. It's going to be something that's going to require some protection. It has to because you got to get a rub or matchup problem. Yeah, they had a little problem with groupings, and Troy Taylor gets a timeout. That's good. Too much at stake in this play. You're putting the game on the line, and uh, the momentum will perhaps swing again. It certainly shifted right there. <laughs> well, there's ebb and flow in the course of every game. This leads to a touchdown, Tim. And then Penix comes right back with a nice opportunity to make a play. But then Manley comes and steals that opportunity right from him, man. And now Troy Taylor's got to figure out a way to get that one play in his back pocket to keep him out of trouble. In the meantime, Rome, Penix, they can do well, nothing but watch. Think about what's at stake. You know, for Stanford, you're just trying to get another win. You know, you had a Herculean second half in Boulder to pull it off at about this time of night a few weeks back. And now you're trying to just get another one, albeit against a team that's highly ranked and has many more goals to attain this year than Deion Sanders' club. But for Washington, they got it all in front of them. It could all be blown if they don't get a stop on this drive, either now or later. Fourth and two. E.J. Smith is the setback. Lined up very, very close to his quarterback, Daniels, who's under center. They pitch it. They throw it. it. It's there. Oh, oh he, he dropped, dropped it. it. Oh, my gosh. Jason Reigns had it and just dropped it. <sighs> Pressure will make a pipe bust. <laughs> it was Bachmeyer <laughs> that was throwing the ball on the trick play. And, man, that's straight out of East Palo Alto. That's yeah. something we would say over there, Timmy. And they had it, man. Oh, boy. They just had it right there. Too, too much time to pocket. think about it. Yep, too much time. It just, it was a little bit short, but not enough, man. Yeah. Just that, catch it and go down. <sighs> catch it and go down. That's all you need. And that says it all right that, there. That look right there just sucks the life right out of you, man. If you're a coach, a coach, you live and die by that yeah. decision. And for... Alan DeVore, he is like, oh That's boy. a sigh of relief. Have we survived, is. or mm. have we survived big time? Well, we've seen two of them in two weeks. Texas last week and Washington now. And here's Dylan Johnson ahead. Stop, stop, stop. This uh, Washington team was a 27 and a half point favorite. Mm. And in one play, fourth down and two, all you need is catch it and sit down. Right. I mean, they, they really set it up, too, with that little caddy corner position yep. right there on the end of the line of scrimmage and not anticipating anything, if you're a defender, that that guy's involved in any pass route. Still two timeouts remaining for Stanford, but they got to get stops here. 
Johnson. Dylan Johnson sets sail. And he has a very important first down. The clock can go tick, 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 tick. Mm -hmm. Scotty Edwards, the free safety with a tackle, a gain of 10. Still time. Must come off that clock. And of course, Stanford's got to use their timeouts yeah, between every point. play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, great use of the timeout offensively to make sure that you got everything right on fourth down. You're putting the game on the line, and Troy Taylor got everything he wanted. Yeah, it was just about the execution. Yeah, there, there you go. You just nailed it right there. It was all about execution. Big game's a loss, not one, Tim. Dylan Johnson wrapped up at the point of attack. May have gotten a yard or two. Gilman with the stop. Time out by the Cardinal. Well, it's time to identify Old Trapper, Spencer. <laughs> Our player of the game sponsored by Old Trapper. What's your beef? My beef is the referee that keeps getting in my way here. <laughs> yeah. Let's take Getting a look at Michael you. Penix's number. 369 passing yards, 21 of 37, four touchdowns and a pick. You can make a case that his uh, counterpart may have outplayed him. Uh, but he'll take the win, and you know what? He is every bit the Heisman candidate that uh, we thought he would be. I think so, and especially because of what happened with Dylan Gabriel at Oklahoma today. Those people who are in that top three or four, a little less clear than it was when Caleb Williams, obviously, they, they got a win late, but they struggled the week before and then lost. And so that, that race is uh, yep. muddier than it ever has been. Yeah. If Stanford, and this is a big if, if they can hold him to a field goal, they would have about a minute to score a touchdown with no timeouts. But they've got to hold him here in second down and eight. Quick pitch to Johnson. A lot of room. A lot of room to the pylon. Yes. Touchdown. Dylan Johnson. Well, when you think about it, it is 41-33. Does he get in? Best thing for Stanford, because if he goes down, he could have run out the in. clock. It was a touchdown. So when you think about it, he does get the touchdown. Yep. He's got to get the extra point now to make it a two-possession game. So all eyes on Grady Gross to make it a nine-point lead, which would appear to be in Toronto. And it's true. <laughs> but boy, oh boy. Troy Taylor gave them more than they bargained for in Seattle and surrounding area tonight. Well, these are the ones that take the most out of you, though, Tim, when you yeah. get so close and right. it just sucks the life right well, out of you. Well, that happened to Houston this. Think of what happened to them this week after what happened uh, last week. Absolutely. And, and again, here it is one more time, Tim. You can see the if block with the, the guard, and then he gets upfield and leads the way and causes a couple of people to, the, yeah. to run into one another. That was Kalepo that caved on a couple of guys. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm impressed with Washington, but I am absolutely incredibly impressed with the way Stanford competed with them tonight. And if not for, you know, that dropped pass, who knows what ending we might have had. Because yeah. Ashton Daniels was scorching hot yeah. in the air and on the ground. Yeah, but the reason I remain bullish on Washington is mainly because they can win in more ways than they can. most any other team yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Without scoring, scoring 15 and uh, key clutch receiving uh, opportunities on the defensive side of the ball. They, they can step up in so many different and, ways. And really their only true clunker was last week against Arizona mm -hmm. State. That was And Arizona State is underrated. Is a good team. For, for, for only a one win team, they are pretty doggone good. You're right. Same is true here for this two and what will be two and 16. But this is what's in front of Washington, all right? After a soft early schedule at USC on the fourth, who barely won across town at Berkeley today. Then Utah, who's got to be a team with hurt feelings after what happened today with Oregon. Oregon State, Washington State, the Apple Cup. You think about all of that, Spencer, and I, of all the teams that I think are contenders in the Pac-12. It's the team with the one loss 
Oregon State that I believe is the most undervalued. Yeah, I think of you're all those right. Teams. Because the, the patina of those first two teams in your lineup there, it's come off a little bit. It's been devalued Agreed. just a time, right? Yep. So now that, that murderer's role looks a less intimidating than it would have otherwise. That pass is caught. Boy, what a beautiful throw to Bryce Farrell. He's going to mess around and get over 500 yards in the air. I mean, Daniels is, wow. Going as quickly as he possibly can against the prevent look. Daniels stepping up. He got him. He's got his man. It is a tip drill that could have been caught. Going the other way as he threw it behind. Esteen got a hand on it. It was intended for Roush, the tight end, who was breaking free. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, Roush is a tight end, a little bit bigger, right? But if that had been more like an athletic guy, a, yeah. a more athletic wide mm -hmm. receiver type, he might have had the body control to make that turn and pivot and catch it off the carom. Low snap, and they give it to Smith. EJ racing to the sidelines, and they're going to say he did not get there, so the clock continues to tick. Yeah, that's a good spot right there. They spark it at the 48-yard line. The third down, about three. Daniels' pass is incomplete. Again, shooting it for Roush. Got bounced around in there. A lot of contact by that Washington secondary as they try to maybe come away with a quick pick, make it look a little bit better on the scoreboard. Chuck Morrell and William Inge, the co-coordinators, have been tested tonight by this Stanford <laughs> offense that brought everything that they had in their arsenal and then some. Fourth and three, trying to keep it alive. Daniels in trouble and down. Oh, he does stay up. Finally hauled down by Fatui. At the 43, and that will do it. And a lot of respect for Daniels as he's helped up by the Huskies. A nice show of sportsmanship. Here you see Fatui coming on the outside, Tim. And we've talked about how these edge rushers have not been able to get to the quarterback. Well, in that particular play, sensing victory, got there and got yeah. home. Still this one out. <laughs> Kalen can he can smile now because. This was the previous fourth down play, and that's oh. where it all ended. Mm -hmm. And Bachmeyer, yeah, the throw was maybe a little too slow for him to get it, but it was on target, and all Reigns had to do was just catch it and drop to the field as opposed to try to turn and run with it. No one feels worse than that young man I know. Yeah, and those Jason are the type Reigns. of plays, Tim, that don't leave you yeah. very quickly. Indeed. <laughs> that's the difficult truth about our game. What a performance by that kid. Mm. Our friends uh, Joe Davis and John Smoltz uh, handling our World Series coverage. What a performance. What a great game <laughs> last night in, in game one. Of course, uh, game two also underway. Just magnificent stuff between the Rangers and the Diamondbacks. Alex Faust and Petros Papadakis are standing by for UNLV in Fresno State. Coming up immediately after our game. A huge Mountain West matchup. They're honoring Pat Hill oh, in the Valley nice. for tonight's game, and that will do it. An 8-0 and o start for these Huskies, and they are number five with a bullet. Maybe not the style points they wanted, <laughs> but they will leave here a happy group. Many, many thanks to Scott Alexander, our content coordinator, our spotter extraordinaire, Brett. Don't call me after my dad, Gary Bender. <laughs> that does an outstanding job. Michael Barship, our broadcast associate here. Spencer Tillman. For all of them, Tim Brando saying so long. Let's send you to UNLV Fresno State. Here's Alex Faust.